We just wanted to take a moment before starting this episode to pay our respects and to remember Kentaro Miura. He was and always will be a true legend who inspired so many people all over the world. And more than anything, we just want this video to be a celebration of his work. And it just felt weird starting the episode any other way. So with that said, rest in peace, Kintaro Miura. Welcome to another episode of Volume 1, the anime and manga podcast, where we usually review the first volume of a brand new manga each week. But today, once again, we're doing something a little bit different. It's our Part 1, Volume Done, Berserk Review. This is going to be covering Volumes 2 through 6 of Berserk. Um, we're going to be breaking the, uh, the Volume Done reviews into... Parts based on arcs, so this is going to cover the this first is part, part of an arc. Yes, this is going to cover the first part of the Golden Age arc. My name, as always, is Josh the Dragon Slayer Michaels, and today, as always, I am joined by Megan the Hawk Preen, mm. uh, Cody uh, the uh, Wolf Kid. <laughs> very specific he always comes bringing the heat um <laughs> obviously like we stated in the intro um today is hopefully going to be a celebration of kentaro miura and his work um obviously because of the news i just think it's important for everybody watching and listening to know that um this is a video that we had planned for a while and usually we like all of our our, our newer wednesday episodes to be a new volume one each week as cody likes to say um, but it just felt weird to talk about anything else right now. It felt weird to 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 talk about another manga series. So we've decided to to put this out as our main episode, and then Saturday as our bonus episode, we'll be reviewing um, Volume One of Tokyo Ghoul for the first time. So today, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to be covering volumes two through six. If you haven't seen our Volume One review of Berserk, you can go check that out somewhere up here. Um, but let's just jump back into it again. Again, I am just so taken with this story. It gets better and better and better. I understand now why so many people desperately plead for people to get past the first couple chapters and get past is maybe not the right way to say it. Yeah, because I mean, as I read it, I was like, oh, this story does get good, but it's not like the first volume isn't indicative of the quality of the writing, yeah. which is why they're like, you have to finish this arc. It's like, well, I want to and I will, but like. The like the people say like well you'd have no idea what the story will be like until you get to that part. Yeah, it's only because I mean you just become more and more invested in Gus's story and yeah. who he is and like his relationship with other people and maybe that's why he didn't have too much of that because in the first volume is kind of just like I'm tough I don't give a fuck about anything and it's like oh okay well I know that, why like, now yeah. <laughs> if Puck wasn't in it I would be like yeah he doesn't get any character mo but he gets enough character moments for me to already start liking him because Puck well, is yeah. able to be like. Well, he's saying this, but he's he's I can he's not he's feeling all these different emotions and he doesn't really mean what he's saying. Yeah. So it's like I, I, I was already getting hints of that. So it's like I, it's not like the story doesn't begin until the Golden Age arc starts. No, absolutely not. It's good from from the jump. I think uh, right away I'm just taken by the world, the characters, the art, everything about it. It's so good right away. But it does seemingly get better and better and better. Yeah. across the board it's uh, a couple people were saying like the art this is something where the art noticeably gets better and mm -hmm. i was like oh but then like when i like got to the next volume I was like oh wow i can actually see the difference yeah. already yeah it's i mean pretty drastic in these volumes we're getting full page spreads of armies that i look at mm -hmm. and can't fathom how long they took to draw that's one of those things where i'm like wow you really didn't have to do that yeah <laughs> i was like i if you just showed like a little square i'd be like all right this is like a castle or something i yeah. would have like been fine with it <laughs> yeah but i was like looking through them like is that like an actual formation that's like yes like an, i noticed that too you're actually yeah. able to see formations i'm telling you you're you're able to see full armies individual soldiers in these armies knights all doing different poses. It's not like you're copying and pasting. No. It's everyone's different. Everybody has a different expression and you can see their all their motivations, their emotions. And it's like Cody said, like 
I'm glad you did it, but you didn't have to. And, and it's not recycled. It's just no. it's just literally like there's three different parts where there's kind of like a formation or like a fight going on and they're all completely different because of where the story's going, like the characters in that moment now. So it's like wow. Yeah. What? And that's <laughs> and that is what makes him one of the many things that makes him one of the greats. I mean, I think that especially combined with those usually at the beginning of a new chapter, those graphite um, drawings of guts mm-hmm. and everything. It's just like something about the softness of the graphite versus like the the rawness or the hardness or the coldness of guts. It's like it's very it's so beautiful and it and it captures these emotions. Like one thing that I was so taken by in these volumes was like his ability to always capture a character's emotion through facial expressions. We'll talk about it more as the episode goes on, but especially with Griffith, who's supposed to be this character that no one really knows where he's at at any given point. But we're always able to tell sort of what he's thinking based on these subtle, subtle facial expressions that he makes. And it's like masterful how, you know, everybody says that there are actors that are like, you know, um, I don't need to have that written down. I can show it in a facial expression. It's like, first of all, get over yourself. Second of all, <laughs> second of all um, for, for, for someone to be able to do that in manga, in this medium, I think is just like, it's, it's, it blows me away every single time. Um, the yeah, story, this go is ahead. Like, uh, I think like it, it is kind of like the feeling is very close to terror and awe whenever I see art where I'm like, where my my mind kind of has to like all right all right you all right what what's going on right now oh my god that's a lot of stuff are gonna I can't draw a person <laughs> yeah and that guy in the way background I can see his individual armor plating yeah and that's another thing too about these ultimate uh, editions that uh, I had to buy volume two uh, as well to read it because Enter once you promo code yeah <laughs> <John, laughs> magic Michaels. <laughs> Because once you go deluxe, you can't go back. That's what they say. Um, Once you go deluxe, you're You're you're, out of luxe. Once you go deluxe, you're always willing to pay the big bucks. Oh, yeah. yeah, Yeah. That was better than mine. Um, You you tried. I tried. You did try. But I don't think that a lot of (laughs) other people's art can stand up to having it displayed in this way. To be magnified. To be magnified. (laughs) On these huge pages, I don't think a lot of art can 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 hold up. I, I think that, yeah, those people in the way back, you know, you can see them. They're not, like, crudely drawn. They're just as detailed as the people in the forefront. Yeah, yeah like, like it is something where I'm going through, like, how long did this take yeah. to do? Where I'm, where I'm like, I, like, take, like, processing all that, it, like, I have to, like, pause. Yeah. And, you know, it's no surprise to me that, first of all, I don't know how they were, uh, the chapters were being released initially, but it's no surprise to me that these chapters took a little longer than most to come out because, of course, they did. Yeah. <laughs> of course, they did. It's inhumanly impossible for yeah. you to bust these out. Like, it's. And the fact that he still nothing. did in the time that he did. It's yeah. Like, one of my favorite, like, I, my favorite manga, like, during some fights, they just don't even bother drawing the background. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like, as yeah. well, like I, I'm just seeing people, like, I don't even, so, like, when it is, like, this little square, if you zoom in, you'll see that, like, uh, the town's, like, mapped out and everything. I'm like, okay, all right. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's always just exceeding every expectation I have for it. And that's, that's something, that's, that's. That's something that so many things never live up to hype, but this is something that has surpassed it in so many ways, I think. Um, but where we left off is um, with our boy Vargas and our yeah. sweet boy Vargas. And we kind of talked like I, I was going to write more notes on the vault, but I, we are, I read volume two pretty much until its entirety. I think I mentioned to you guys I read all the way to like volume four, so I was kind of like already in the middle of it yeah. and then I read it again but we talked a lot about volume two kind of in yeah like the, halfway through yeah like which, halfway through I, I, was, I was reading I'm like oh okay this yeah all right and, yeah and, okay now I uh okay I guess which this is, really is volume two in hindsight in hindsight I think that ended up being a good thing because I I do kind of want to you know get through sort of the events before the golden age arc because I think the golden age arc is um where the story changes completely yeah. And, and that's when um, it becomes the uh, the not pre. That's where it goes into the origin. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll let, we'll just kind of power through this a little bit because the, um, the we did cover a, a lot of it. In it's the about him part. fighting the count. Yes, who got a lot more depth than I thought he was going to. Yeah, I wrote. You know, <laughs> I wrote. This is like obviously spoilers, right? 
It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. Don't you hate when you find out that your dad is like a demon and he eats people? Yeah, he is fucking disgusting. Yeah, too. he he is pretty gross. He's like a caterpillar and like he's like a slug. He's a like slimy. a slimy slug, and then you just find out about how he became that way, and you're well, like, yeah. oh, you it, motherfucker. In a way, where I was like, oh, that poor guy. Yeah, dude, because, you know, you're you're assuming, I think, because you're let in by what Vargas has told us, that he's this monster who had, and I don't, you know, know if, um, I, you know, I kind of, in my mind, made the story, him the bad guy of the story, but then when we find out that he's sort of like, quote unquote, like, the victim of this uh, uh, story. Well, that's, I mean, because he, well, Vargas didn't know that. Yeah. But then also, something happened at the very end that was sort of like, whoa, well, why, why is that that way with Vargas? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because it is like, well, he did torture and eat people. That is a thing he did. Yeah. But then they show like, well, this happened that made him the kind of person to do that. And he's also not necessarily like human. Yeah. No, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. It, like he made a deal and the consequence of that, he basically got, uh, uh, what is it, crossed, double crossed. Uh, yeah, kind of. So, a yeah. A deal with the devil. A deal with the devil. And we find out that the bailet is a key to the god hand, which we mean The face egg. The mm -hmm. face egg. Mm -hmm. Which we get to see way earlier than I thought we were going to get to see. And so, yeah, a lot of a lot of the remaining chapters before we get there are just guts going, you know, Vargas gets executed, which we kind of alluded to in the volume one. Um, he doesn't, that, that's what we were talking about, Cody, where he doesn't bother really saving him because he knows it's a trap. What, uh, what I thought was really nice is he is going like, he's doing, uh, I don't care about anything. And then, but then Puck goes like, oh, I can feel so much sadness yeah. in this guy. Yeah. And he is just like, yeah. Cause a lot of it is guys being like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. But he like, I mean the whole, th that's why Puck is so important. He's like, no, he is so filled with sadness and anger right now. Cause it's an army. He can't do anything. Yeah. And, and it's not that he's like, I don't care. He's weak. Yeah, and he one, of the, shit. one of the best parts about going back and preparing for this episode was being able to know what happens up until what I know. And then being able to go back and see him and why and knowing why he is that way. Yeah, that's why I do like having like some kind of insight to like, OK, he's grown now. We see who he is and then showing immediately, you know, the next Golden Age arc, like how this happened and him meeting Griffith and like all these other people and like, oh, this is this was all of the things that happened before you got to this point. And like even his interaction with him, too, you're just like, this feels nostalgic for me. And they're like, you know, mm -hmm. friends. So like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. And it, it, it really shows that it's just this work is just timeless and that it has uh, re readability to go back and have all these extra layers given to guts. It's the uh, the egg takes them all to the uh, the MC Escher world. <laughs> the MC Escher world. Yes. yes. Uh, where it is like, oh, the, the, the council of evil people, including a character from Mars Attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and they tell the count like, oh, you just have to sacrifice your you have to sacrifice someone you you genuinely care about in order to make a deal with it's us. The only we'll, way. Yeah. <laughs> and he the count is like, no, I can't do that. And I was like, oh, well, that's and then they show that like what happened to the count where it's like, oh, his like wife was a Satanist. Is that? Yeah. It's, yeah. It was yeah. like an orgy. I was like, don't you hate when your mom like goes yeah, to double wow. orgies and then when your dad getting, finds gets, out? Getting it from all angles. Which yeah. Is, yeah. It's like, oh, he came home early from a crusade. <laughs> yeah. And he finds in his basement a fucking Belzebub fucking statue yeah. and all these people fucking. He's like, babe. Yeah, which, what the fuck? Which, how early did he come back? Because it was going to take a long time to clean yeah, that stuff up. Yeah, there was a up. lot of people <laughs> well, in that room. He never comes down to the basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going to work at least until Friday. Don't worry yeah. about it. But yeah, I, I, I really I, dropped the ball. <laughs> I was surprised by that little turn that like, oh, the wife was the one who caused yeah. this, this down. And then because the deal he made was like, I want to be, I would never want to feel this kind of pain. Yeah. They're like, oh, we can make sure you never feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> Ever yeah. again. <laughs> so they make this deal with him, but it's only for, I believe, like half of his humanity, I think. Because from my understanding, when he goes back, the second part of the deal is for all of it. Like, Yeah, because he still cares about his daughter. Yeah. yeah. And his daughter, you know, has been trapped in her room. She hasn't been allowed to leave her room since she was a child because of all of this stuff and her dad not trusting anybody and her dad becoming a monster. Um, uh, but he does still care about her and he does still go in her room and he does still check up on her. But she knows something is off. She just she knows that he's 
killing people and eating them. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but she's also really not familiar with the outside world at this point because no. the inside of the room is all she's ever known. Yeah. Um. And so later on, when she when she's freed from that room and she sees kind of everything that's happened, she wants to immediately return after have wanted nothing more than to be free, but also quickly blames guts for um everything that's happening which from a child's point of view like you know yeah it's like i get being mad but it's like at the very least your dad was mercy killed yeah yeah because it's not like he was like happy with what happened to him either no and they the 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 story also says like oh if it make this you when you make a pact to like sacrifice someone you care about we like we we brand them it's like oh guts has a brand yeah Mm -hmm. oh what well, Guts has a brand. Hey, isn't that isn't that the the hawk guy? Isn't that his yeah. best friend? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really like that. Like, ah, uh, something happened. But also, so like as I read, it, I'm like, oh, so this nothing. Like, it depended on being a genuine concern. So it's like, so when they do start showing their relationship, I do know, like, oh, it was they weren't faking it. No, no. that's even the worst part because yeah. they're just and he just has so much anger and he's just like Griffith. And it's we've like, seen he, what Griffith's done. But we haven't seen yet what he's done to get to that. Like, he becomes part of this interdimensional demonic group of beings. Yeah, you know, you like, hate, how did he achieve that? You walk with ducks. <laughs> yeah. You talk with ducks. You're going to mm-hmm. end up being a duck. Never yeah. heard that in my you life. You never heard of that? It's never. Heard walk that. like a duck, talk like a duck. Yeah, that's the phrase. You'll but... end up being a oh, duck. Oh, wait, no, that's not the. <laughs> But never heard that. God damn it! What the the final part of of that whole of that scene where like because the, the count's like no I I'm I'm not going to do this and like you're going to hell either way yeah like it, like not sacrificing your daughter just means you'll go to hell sooner but then they show like Vargas is in hell yeah uh, yeah but well Vargas I think see from what I understand it's just the dead and i don't know mm. necessarily if we've been let in on if there even is a heaven like the or underworld if, yeah like the uh, like a sort of underworld mm. type of thing where like it's not our idea of what a heaven and a hell is it's just a place where all the dead go and like maybe it's, vengeance spirits and, yeah and maybe it's worse for some people you know and maybe like you said a, a spirit who has like ve- you know seeks vengeance which vargas would yeah, yeah. He, he'd, he'd be, be there. The, that's yeah. what all the, that but was like, all the victims i think of his past maybe when, that's his like probably. personal hell Okay, but like when the count was being like taken in, he like started to return back to looking like he still looked like a a, a monster when yeah. he was a human being. <laughs> yeah. he was, he was sort of like, oh, I guess he's just like a big boned fellow. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but then it's like he starts like looking like that. But then Vargas still has like half his face story. Like he didn't get that. Why didn't he get that fixed? But the count gets his face. Fixed. Well, to Megan's point, like it could be his own hell. It could be sort of like you know, it it, it just to me though what it did do was illustrate. And, and give sort of this poetic closure to Vargas' story. Like, that Vargas was, in the end, able to get that revenge. And, yeah, um, like he said, you, like, oh, you're going to be dragged to hell, and he he got to drag him to he hell. He got so to do was, it, yeah, which is nice. like, which was like, and it felt, that moment felt powerful. That moment felt like I got everything that I needed. It was a, it was a beautiful bow on that story, but that's where, you know, there, there is a, um, there is something called, I think it's the law uh, or the thread of causality that the God hand is constantly referencing. And um, they're basically speaking in a theme that we see that, that plays throughout these volumes is causality and just that are, are we our choices or are our choices like, do they come from a, a higher power or, or a higher being? And the, the, if destiny is real, there's no free will. Yeah. And um, and so they're not they are they are clearly a very evil group, but they operate by these these laws. So that's a that's how Guts is able to get out of there. He does go after Griffith with so much anger and oh, so yeah. much He's passion. He's like, you fucking bitch. I've been waiting for this day all week. I mean, and you I mean, the pain. He's like screaming at the top of his lungs and he's not letting anything stop him. And we're getting clued in on like not only his past with Griffiths, but like how he is not phased by anything that is happening. Like everybody else, Puck, Teresa, everybody else is like, where the fuck are we? We're in this dimension <laughs> where planes of, you know, even existing are upside down and everybody's like gravity isn't nah, a thing. His focus is directly on yeah. his ass. He's like, oh, okay, let's go, boy. Yeah. He's like, you can't touch me though. Like, it's and wild. he can't, like, yeah. he, he can't. Yeah, it's wild. Cause he, yeah, he cares about that one thing. But because of that thread of causality being severed, you know, the count is no longer um, important to them. Mm-hmm. And so the bailet kind of, I guess, closes and they're, you know, back in um, the real world. And um, 
of course, then we have that moment that we kind of touched on where, you know, Teresa looks at Guts and makes it sort of her, you know, M-O. life goal yeah. to, to, to kill Guts. And, and he's yeah. like, bring it. And then the, it just cuts to him being like. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. like the most it's awful. Just so, he's yeah. just so and hurt. He's just like, oh, and he's just like. Yeah. He just walks out. So he's just, like, I just risked my life. But also, that was probably just seeing fucking Griffith again. He was just like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was all of There was emotions. so much stuff of like, oh, like it, it, it that also brought her out of her like depression. And like, I think she wanted to die after that. Yeah. yeah. And, it was, and she's like, well, my motive will be. And so it is like, yeah, bring it on. It's like, oh, he's, he's giving her purpose. It's, it's so it, like, that was nice. And then he was just like, oh, man. Yeah. Well, he's like, now that she's going to live her life for revenge like I do. Well, no, but I also kind of read it that way, too, that Cody read it. It's like, she at a point was, I think, had given up and was like, fuck all of this. I want to be back in my room. I want to die. I don't want to deal with this. And so I think Guts saw her taking that revenge mm-hmm. as like a purpose, a something yeah. to live for. And was like, if that's all she's got. I'm not gonna take that away from I'll her. Be your, I'll be your villain if yeah. it means you'll yeah. get, out of, you get yeah. out of your room. Yeah, Aww. it was sort of the uh, and the sad night doth walk away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so sad. I hate that face. I literally wrote, I can't handle it. I can't, I can't take this. Like, so it was so destroyed. impactful because you yeah. like have never seen him look that sad throughout the whole volume two or volume even one, and you're just like, fuck, dude. Yeah. What's gonna happen now? Um, and then we cut to. Our big flashback, Guts's origin story, backstory. And, Which is the most oh metal origin for a character. Bro. Yeah. It was so crazy. He is literally a, a, a fetus with his umbilical cord <laughs> still attached in like all the birth fluids, like underneath his mother, who's like hung or either hung herself or has been hung oh, oh, from a for tree. Sure hung from a tree. Yeah. yeah 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 either but did she do it or did someone else do it oh, that's a bunch of people that's a, a thing I, I i know from like medieval type warfare is they would hang um like civilians and stuff from trees as like a warning or a uh, as like a look what we just did yeah, yeah like we destroyed you people like, like it's like a terror it, so that's that, that's a thing they did in that era and of the, fighting and so the, like <laughs> she was pregnant at the time and it's like oh uh, is that why he's called guts Oh man! Uh, Come on, dude. But even because they're they, they, like they hesitant jump. to even take him because they're like he's bad luck. Like who tells uh, babies <laughs> that you find on the side of the road well, I mean, are bad luck? In you know that world? classic saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, in this world too, though. I mean, this what is a people mean? who are uh, based their life on omens and yeah. yeah I mean, if people are like, yeah, you know, you albatrosses, you never want to make those mad. You know, like you pick up a. A just born baby from a dead mother in a tree. Seven years of bad luck. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, who was the one carrying him? The uh, the girl, sis, oh. uh, right? The, is the person who yeah, picked him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was the one who like insisted on bringing him and because everyone like, was just like, we're, I mean, "Come on!" We're. They're like, "Well, first of all, they were like, he's dead." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no yeah. Way this baby's alive. <laughs> first of all, that so, you know, we're not here to rescue anyone. They're a, we're a mercenary band. Yeah. We don't have caretakers, so yeah. it, it was. It didn't like it was like that's fucked up, but it was also like I mean, what what are they supposed to do? Yeah, yeah. it was so metal, so dark, so it was everything about it was just twisted. But it's I guess fitting for our character, and might be why he is called guts. If that's the case, then that's fucking horrible. Because they jump, <laughs> they they're already calling him guts immediately. Yeah. So it's like okay, well, what could inspire that yeah. name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A plus B equals C. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Cause, uh, they, no one ever goes. I feel like if this was a movie, you know, like a live action movie made now, people go like, Guts? Guts? Why do they call you Guts? And you'd be like, Cause I got them. <laughs> yeah. Some corny ass adaptation. Yeah. But, like, no one questions why he's named Guts. And has no. the, it's a badass fucking name, though. Yeah. Um, and it's like, Oh man, I you know you hope no one ever asks him why he's named. Yeah, that. please don't. <laughs> That's a whole conversation. You're up a whole you guts? different book, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 He does the face again. <laughs> yeah, he makes the crying face. <laughs> um, and sis, you know, I don't. I think her relationship to there's sis, and then there's Gambino, and Gambino becomes a huge fuck, figure. Fuck, um, fuck that. Yeah. Fool. I was also like, yeah. oh, fucking bitch ass Gambino, I'm gonna kill your ass. Oh well, you don't have to. I wish I could have. <laughs> yeah, me too. 
Me too. This is where I also see, you know, in our first episode, we did say it's titled Everything is Berserk. Like, this is where Vinland I did get saga. some Vinland Saga. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, like it's very clear to me, at least, that Vinland Saga got a lot of inspiration yeah. from this because I, it's the same in a lot of ways. Knowing that, I, st- I, I still think Vinland Saga is a very good story, but it is just like... You saw that premise and was like, what if we explored on that? So, which I like, I have no problem yeah. with. Absolutely not. And you're it, right. Villain Saga is still its own thing, but that part is It, like, it yeah. was like, that's very specific. Yeah. Unless that's a, a classic story that I'm not aware of. Yeah. I, I was like, all right, Vinland. Yeah. Because it's it's that same sort of relationship that we see. Sis, first of all, doesn't last very long. Um, she gets the plague. Yeah, leprosy or something. Yeah, and is um, um and even in that one moment, first of all, Baby God. Stop. Oh my God. Stop. Stop. The way he literally, like, after he gets his sword and he sleeps with the sword for yeah. comfort on the floor. Yeah. I mean, like, before that, too, when, like, Sis is reaching up again, this is like why Miro was a a, 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 a a master and a legend because like what he's able to capture emotionally in those last moments between Sis and Guts when Sis is like has this like a very contractible disease. And Guts is just like, you know, against everybody's advice, like reaches out to her and holds her hand, like because he That's cares. For all her. he knows is her. And then she does. Yeah. And he cares for Gambino too, which is yeah. why I fuck Gambino. Yeah. No, that's the worst part. Yeah. Because he has, it's all he's known. And he's just like, this, I deserve this treatment. Yeah. Because I'm a dumbass and I'm just a kid. I need to grow up faster. And he says something to him um, in that moment. Um, well, he we I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Uh, she dies and he gets very um you know uh I don't think he says it outright yet, but I think Gambino does sort of like blame guts as being mm-hmm. bad luck and as being like this is your fault and yeah. you know you should have died, which is something he says later instead of her. But now Gambino's forced to raise him and is just that you know classic archetype tough love. Bad dad. Bad stepdad. Yeah. Hand me the sword faster. And it's like, that is a four year old (laughs) baby. I know. And he's like, okay. And he's so small. And slicing him across the nose. He's so small. So small. Um, But, you know, even early on, like, we're we're led into, like, Guts being this, like, resilient kid who's going to, in a lot of ways, like, it hurts to say it knowing what happens, but in a lot of ways, someone who wants to prove himself to Gambino mm-hmm. who wants well, to earn his love because well sis was his mom yeah and Gambino was his dad like, yeah that, that was the dynamic yeah and um so we cut to after some horrible training montages where Gambino's just beating up a child um, and even, yeah. even the other mercenaries like yeah uh, Gambino chill 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 chill, chill, yeah, chill. Yeah. <laughs> mercenaries hey hey, hey chill chill, chill bro you, should we should we step in no he'll probably kill us yeah. oh okay yeah. we'll just watch yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, people are like, well, yeah, we, we'll, we'll like raid a, a town, but like, I mean, dude, dude, it's 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 a baby, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and especially yeah. since I mean they've seen this kid grow up, like he's been around, he probably helps them out too, and they're just like, let's just turn a blind eye to what's going on over there, because yeah. Gambino's a fucking crazy person. He's like a, he is an asshole to everyone. Like he's not yeah. just guts; he's just an, like a an asshole. Yeah, and everybody's afraid of him, and no one wants to cross him. Yeah. Um, but we do get to see sort of a, a, a cut to, I think, three years later. Guts is sort of a lot um, stronger. He's proven himself in battle. <laughs> I wouldn't say better, but he's... Um, he's, yeah, he's not yeah. like he's not emotionally better. No, no, he's, he's never going to be. No, He's stronger. He's, you know, he's allowed to be on the battlefield now. Mm-hmm. And um, he's, so I guess, proven himself to be that worthy. And he has this celebratory moment where he, he, he accomplishes something that he's proud of. And he gets a little, you know, bag of coins, takes it back to Gambino. He's so excited. And um, uh, it's where we see, like, one of the fucking worst things. We learn why Gus does not like being touched. Yeah. Literally, Gambino, just that panel. But, like, I, I knew what happened and I read it again. And he's just like, oh, thanks, bro. bro. Like, he's like, oh, this is cool, whatever. And I'm just like, I want to rip your eyes out and fuck. I hate. I hate you. Like, I mean, I, it's it's the it's, it's it's and then he just like and then he just acknowledges like he knows that he did it and he's told that oh yeah you were sold to me by Gambino and that's like the ultimate just like yeah well yeah and that's and what's yeah. so um, traumatic about it as a reader is just like and again from a writing standpoint just to be able to put value 
on guts is now able to put value on his life and his worth as a human being which to is be able three to put silver coins three silver coins like you know there's someone in my life who i won't name who um, um who was uh, the victim of like sexual assault and their um you know their worth was always tied to a pack of gum because that's what they were traded for um <laughs> before something happened so you know knowing how that affects a real person in my life to now this character, like to be able to have that, like that, that value, like set for you, like I'm literally worth that because I, I was sold to another person for that. Like it's hard for anybody real or, or fictional in this case, I guess, to get over that. Like what and he doesn't yeah. believe it is like, he's just yeah. like, that, that's, that's a lie. You're There's right. no yeah. way that happened. There's no way. Like I just started becoming good. Like I just started showing what I could do. Yeah. There's no way that that would happen. Like, what do you mean? Maybe far, four years ago, maybe, but I'm better now, right? Yeah. Right? And it's just like, no. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> no, Gambino's horrible. We're glossing over it, but like, it is like he was sold to, to another soldier for a night. Yeah. And yeah. the worst part about that is he was fighting him off for a little bit. Yeah. The worst part is he was, I was like, okay, all right, no, he's going to make, uh, and, and, you know, maybe even the worst part is he kind of didn't stand a chance. Well, no yeah. way. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, I think it's important for the story for it to have been depicted the way it was depicted just to get how traumatic it was for Guts. But, I mean, it is like not easy to see. Like, no. it is not. Um, because it is a realistic. Yeah. Depiction of a grown man assaulting a young child. Yeah. 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 And, um it's 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 all there. I mean, you know, the one thing I will say about Berserk is there's no g- genitalia. I mean, oh yeah, uh, that's true. But still, I mean, you got everything else, and it's like that's it's just still a lot. And you don't need it to make it any worse. It's already fucking pretty bad. And then he's just like laying there, and he's all sad and like just yeah. shook, and I'm just like, Cut. oh my god. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, this is. I mean, we've read a lot of you know manga. I, I think of Pun Pun. I think of. Um, uh, there was another one that I uh, I had, but I, I just it just slipped my mind right now. Where we've seen you know people being assaulted, and Pun Pun was was graphic too. Yeah. Um, but um, this to me just felt very different. Well, yeah, um, we're seeing like grown people kind of take advantage do of that. a child. Yeah, no, we I don't think I've and ever Pun Pun seen was that. a child too. I mean, I think he was a teenager, and that's still terrible. But I mean, like, I don't know. It it was just yeah it was rough right? yeah 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 for sure and just like knowing like i said imagine if that was the first like people always say like oh start with the golden age arc and then go into the other arcs or like just skip these couple volumes and i'm like this doesn't have that much impact that just for me it feels like a part of the elitism of like sure yeah until you've read this you can't really say but like what do you that's the intro to this story yeah the impact know? wouldn't have been there if i just saw him okay this this sucks for him but like seeing him who he is now like beforehand you're like fuck yeah. That's yeah, why this is the reason why. Like yeah. these are everything lining up is the reason why. Is that like poon poon? It's like oh, like story after story, things that happen to him are shaping him into this person that is just like yeah. fucked up. And you're right about the impact thing. It, it you know, it, it would have of course been a terrible thing to see, but like yeah. now that we feel like we know him, and now that we feel like we're getting insight into why he is the way he is, it, it was a, it, it did it did make it more powerful, mm-hmm. and it did have more of an impact. I think. Um, but after that horrible um, Which, scene, to it, I, I I was like, oh man, yeah, guts is right. Like, no, Campino didn't do that. Like, I was I was going, I had to reread it a couple times. Like, no, Campino didn't do that. No, I was but because he I did was it so this, casually. I was it in was the so same casual. level of guts being like, no, he, no, he's just paying that guy. What are you talking? About? I was like, Guts was so, he believed it so much. I was like, no, you're right, man. No. <laughs> it wasn't as if Gambino knew what was happening and turned a blind eye to it. Mm-hmm. It was that he actively mm-hmm. was paid and, yeah. and went along with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah. And, and again, I think the reason it is so easy to gloss over it was because of how casually and nonchalant to Gambino it was. It was yeah. like, you know, can I? And Gambino's like, sure. <laughs> you know? I don't Three care. silver coins. Yeah, that's it. I don't you give know? a shit. Yeah. Uh, and after that, um, rightfully so. Um, I mean, we can see the the, the trauma in, in Guts's eyes after that, and he and um, he gets his revenge in in a skirmish. He makes it seem as though the person who did this to him was taken out by an enemy, but you know Hell it's yeah. by Guts's own hand. That was His first dope. time using a crossbow. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and so. then he just stabs him in the fucking throat. So it is like okay, like growing up, he had to 
use swords that were bigger than him because they the mercenaries said we're not going to make a sword for a kid, which is why he's always been used to using so huge big, swords. Yeah, so exactly. he is like that is he's always been on that level with swords. And then you see the first time he the first kill he got with a crossbow that I've seen it's is when he killed his uh, attacker. Yeah, and you know it 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 was it was nice to see guts get his revenge, but at the same time it hurt so much to see the pain in him. Because his, um, you know, plea to this man before he killed him was like, say it again. Like, tell me, tell me Gambino did it now. Like, I dare you to tell. It was me like, tell Gambino, me, tell me the yeah. truth. Because he doesn't, he still doesn't believe Gambino. Yeah. He's like, tell me who did it. Like, yeah. like, tell me that, like, he's like interrogating him. Yeah. Like Gambino. So it was just like, he does not believe it. Yeah. He can't. And that happens. We get that, which is like, I guess, I guess it's at least nice that Guts gets one, you know, little victory and he gets to kill um, the man who attacked him, which, yeah. you know, and vi it, victory doesn't even the, sound uh, like the right word because of how terrible it all was. It's but. just sad that he had to do that. Like, uh, yeah. It's like, I mean, he's like killing other people, I guess, but. But still. The, uh, the dynamic is because, uh, okay, that was the first time he used his crossbow. He used his crossbow to kill someone who like clearly he wasn't a physical match for. And that's how he uses the crossbow when we meet it. Like he only uses it when he's like, I'm out match yeah. time to time to. So it is like, Oh, he, he's already fighting. Like he's always fought. So yeah, all these things, have, there's a purpose and a reason for everything this character yeah. does. Mm -hmm. Once he's like, I'm out matched time to whip out the big guns. And like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going go to go toe to toe. If I don't know, I can win. Yeah. Um, and then I think after that, we get another, uh, time skip. And, um, now we see, uh, another battle. That uh, Guts and Gambino are in, and Guts is, you know, now even stronger, handling, you know, even more business. But this time, Gambino gets got a little bit. And, ha ha, uh, bitch. Yeah. Your leg's gone, bitch. You Gets his leg, um, you know, amputated, but doesn't let that stop him from being a fucking monster. Doesn't let that <laughs> stop him from kicking a dog with yeah. his other foot. Yeah. I mean, that's they just, didn't no. become more humble after that. No, yeah. no, yeah. not at all. He just became worse, I think, because he was just like, I can't do shit yeah. now, pretty much. But he's yeah. still the leader, and people are still afraid of him. I, I, I don't get that. Uh, I mean... I don't get that. Why would Why would you want a one-legged leader? I mean, it's well. like loyalty. Okay, not like that. <laughs> not like that. But like, in, the, in this world, Good there's concept. a hierarchy of power, right, and right. it's the medieval right. times. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, basically being, right, right, right. you know as, what I mean? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. We know what you mean. I know okay. What you mean. Yeah. No. I know. I know. I know what you mean. I just thought it would be funny to it was to make funny. me look bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. what he does. He makes everybody he's ever come across. Look bad. <laughs> Cody Decker, You're ladies Cody and gentlemen. Decker, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, no. But that that is like okay. Well, as the leader, he's supposed to like charge into battle, which he does. He's in the the heat of battle. But now it's like, well, if you're not, you can't contribute to fights anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's just, you know, they've sworn their loyalty to him yeah. and and you know, there there are reasons for it, I guess. And there is um, from, you know, briefly we're let in on that there probably is another like someone commanding the force, but he is just there back at base making decisions or and whatever. And it's not like he's not intimidating either. Like he is still like yeah. like he's I scared. I I would be like, hey, wait, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's still like legends and stories about mm -hmm. him, I'm sure. There's respect so, yeah. here that doesn't yeah. just go away. Exactly. Especially if you survive that. Exactly. But now he's just like this like curmudgeon that's on top of this hill. And, and he um, literally kicks a dog. And kicking the dog is like a term for like, when you're just being needlessly petty yeah. and evil. Yeah. So we see him literally kick a dog. He, well, I, yeah. think it's, I think it's interesting that he, you know, Good that he literally. Oh, my God. Is that where the phrase is from? The dog when what it's if down? it is? Uh, uh, there's a, the beating the a dog, dead horse. Kick the dog. No, is, that's a different phrase. Mm. The, but it's, it's the, phrase, the same the one. The phrase I'm saying is <laughs> yeah. the phrase that I kicking a, a dog when it's down. Kicking a dog when it's down. I mean that that's also fucked up. It's also <laughs> fucked up. But I do think it's interesting that um, you know after again guts comes back excited to share his <sighs> his you know wealth with Gambino. It is interesting that Gambino. Here's the layers that that I got reading that it's like Gambino's with this dog. And he seems at the time to like like this dog, to love yeah, this dog. Yeah, he's petting the dog yeah. and he's like, good boy. And then go, go, go. Guts comes up to him with this reward that he's, you know, earned. And Gambino's first concern isn't congratulations or anything, but it's to tell him to go get something for the dog. And so by doing that, he like slaps Guts with the crutch. And then as Guts is walking away, we see Gambino kick the dog. So to me, it's like, at first I'm thinking like, oh, Gambino is treating this dog better than he's treating Guts. Yeah. To him, Guts is lower than a dog. Yes. But then he kicks the dog, and I'm like, this guy just hates everything yeah. and everybody. He's just well, a sour old man. Yeah, yeah now he's seen. seeing that his, like, you know... Oh, go ahead, sorry. 
This won't be worth it, but they should change his name to the not so great Gambino. Uh, <laughs> okay, it was a little worth it. It was a little worth it. That was good. It. Yeah, he's not he's not great at all. Yeah, um, more he, like the not great guy. Not you great guy Gambino. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, and, oh, I forgot uh, what I was going to say. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. I, I think at this point now, I mean, his leg's gone. He's kind of, you know, he knows eventually maybe people aren't going to respect him as much because they're kind of like talking smack about him. Like mm-hmm. the other people are like talking shit about him. He's like, what'd you say? And they're like, nothing. Yeah. And they're going to, he's going to know. He, if he, I think he knows that Guts is going to replace him. And, and he's younger and he's older and he, I think it's like a jealousy thing at this point where he's like I hated this little kid for so long I taught him everything I know well now he's going to take my spot a yeah, little I, bit yeah, I, yeah, yeah he's get guts is already getting the general kills like yeah the, yeah not ju- like general as in title not a uh, right. uh, the vague sense mm-hmm. yeah and I think yeah you're right I think there is jealousy whether he's gonna take over for him or not I think he's just and he does see him as this like bad omen he's like this is again your fault and so you know we cut to guts being frustrated in a tent and at night trying to fall asleep and at first i thought this was a dream uh that gambino stumbles into the tent Mm -hmm. and um you know is basically sword drawn ready to kill him and i'm like he's dreaming right now but no he's there ready to take him out and um you know starts starts yelling horrible things which still as a child which guts still is by the way even though he's yeah, on the battlefield killing he's people, literally like probably 12 or 13 at this point yeah telling him things that will stay with him forever like you know your bad luck you should have died like i sold you for three silver like that's all you're worth like just reinforcing all you're of these bad things omen. i'm telling you, you die and then in the first volume we see that that's a lot of what he tells people yeah, yeah. That's, so that's why that matters so it's yeah. like it's crazy because you keep seeing the ramifications of gambino's actions throughout like all of guts's life and it's just so fucking sad but you know guts does what he has to do and takes him out um, he barely I mean he, he I think he's just like trying to fight him off and I don't think he like necessarily wanted to like kill him at that moment was, but he just kind of like he falls on yeah it. he falls on it and that's even worse because he didn't like do it himself he just literally fell on it and then he's just like yeah. standing next but to him and he's like Ugh. it wasn't until that that like Guts finally accepted that he was actually sold by Gambino yeah, yeah. yeah. up until that he was always just like yeah he was lying <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I think even uh, in those last moments you know it was hard for him to believe and come to terms with but yeah. he did and and other people stumbled in which you know hey i don't really get i get it but i don't get it um i get it from a storytelling point of view but as these characters in this world like gambino was a terrible fucking person and i think a lot of people knew that and they stumble in on this scene and assume that guts just out yeah. of nowhere decided to kill gambino <laughs> Um, and they're like, hey, he raised them as his own, his own flesh and blood. Yeah. He did. These and are the same merc- mercenaries that they were saying to take it easy well, on him. Yeah. I, yeah, it's probably for a story standpoint too of him just like being able to like leave that situation. Because if they were like, <laughs> yeah, you're one of us now, then he'd be stuck in that. And I'm sure, yeah, like, like imagine camp. that funeral where you have to be like, no, Gambino was a, a misunderstood figure. I mean, we did watch him beat up a toddler, yeah, for years. And there still uh, are people that are loyal to him and everything too. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense, but it, it just, like, just like, I mean, come on. Come I, on. I thought it was going to be like, oh, if you kill the leader, you become the leader. I thought I was like, okay, mm-hmm. guys, yeah, things are about to turn too. around for old a Dothraki gutsy. situation. Yeah. Dothraki, <laughs> <laughs> Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, he didn't. Oh, okay. okay, don't yeah. talk about. Yeah, it. doesn't know anything. Dragons. Sure. Yeah. 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 Later. Way Disappointing later. ending Way that later. completely killed the cultural yep. impact yep. of the series. Yep. 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 They really phoned it in at the end and ruined because the whole thing. Because the yeah. people <laughs> directing it weren't writers. No. Yeah. They didn't really. Uh, care. So when they was like, "Oh, we'll just write it," turns out they they're uh, yeah, they didn't give a shit. They were just off to the next. Imagine project. Game of Thrones level berserk. TV this is show, what this though? needs, dude. And, that, and a live action TV show. Like, it breaks my heart. That'd be that, crazy. Um, I think they could do it. Yeah. There's gonna be a lot of cut scenes. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah well i don't know a lot of cutting some... to black no yeah, yeah. i don't know because game of thrones they did a lot of that a lot of those things yeah. happened between yeah. adults um between adults and and at, at, at a certain point a younger adult but a, like yeah like, but like i think a, like a 16 year old yeah maybe? like yeah. maybe if they age guts up maybe maybe either way it needs a faithful adaptation. This is something that needs it. And it does break my heart that if it were to ever happen, that Miura will never get to see it. But I do think that like, it, it just, it breaks my heart on so many levels that something so impactful hasn't got a faithful, well done adaptation and how that sorry excuse for whatever came out in 2016 or whatever. Is what do you, the, the 3d animated oh, uh, okay. one. It's just like, 
that that even was able to slip through the cracks like bothers me. But yeah, well, you know, I, I was there. telling you guys too. I was just letting the anime play, and then I was just reading the manga pretty much, and like just like the original anime. the original yeah. anime, the nineteen ninety seven, and it was it's. I mean, that's the most faithful adaption out there yeah. as well, of right yeah. now, and it only covers the Golden Age mm-hmm. arc. It doesn't cover any other arcs in the series mm-hmm. so it's like oh this is fun the anime yeah. starts like after this mm-hmm. scene where he's like i he just becomes a wandering yeah. person and yeah i i only saw the anime like years ago mm-hmm. but i was like yeah the anime didn't do a bad job as far as i can tell i mean the the drawing isn't as like <laughs> the right. animation is <laughs> yeah. it's not the best <laughs> i mean what's what they had at the time yeah I mean, for its time i think it is really good it yeah. just doesn't really it, it some parts hold up but some parts really don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, Guts has to escape. Oh, and... Uh, and oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, there's nothing. Uh, he has this moment where, you know, once he does, um, you know, uh, escape this situation, he he's in another terrible situation where... Uh, he, he's, at this point, literally given up. He can't um, catch a fucking break. Yeah, I mean... He cannot catch a break. Not only can he not catch a break, but he's just, like, out. He's Autopilot. Like, He's like, I'm done. I don't want to fucking, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know why I'm put on this fucking earth to, to, if, if, if this is what's going to happen to me and keep happening to me, like, I don't want, I just want this to fucking all end. And, you know, he kind of gets that from these wolf, this pack of wolves that, that, uh, come to him. And it's almost as if like, it's a reaction. It, it doesn't seem like he's actively trying to kill them. He resigns to death at a he's certain like, point. like, this is how I die. Yeah. 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 But then, almost on reflex, is able to to just kill. Turns it on. Yeah, to kill a wolf, and then that maybe awakens something in him, and he starts killing the rest of them. Or he's just on autopilot the whole time. Yes, he, he wants to be a lone wolf. And maybe that's, that's what that the symbolism. Mm-hmm. Wow, Megan. He doesn't want to run with the pack. At, at deciphering things than I am. <laughs> Everybody is <laughs> high bar. <laughs> <laughs> high bar you set, Josh, for me. Uh, but then we get this beautiful spread of him just laying there after he's killed these wolves and he's looking up at the stars and he's, you know, questioning his existence. And as one would, as one would. <laughs> and he uh, had a, a rough, what rough, uh, pre, pre, uh, pre. It's been rough and it's just beginning um, yeah. in a lot of ways. But um, so then we just cut to another time skip where he, he now is just a traveling mercenary for hire. He's going from group to group. He has made a name for himself, um, you know, at People least. People are like, you want, you want to work for us? Yeah. I, I, like, I like how like, there were like, just nice mercenaries. Like, yeah, yeah, you should work with us, man. Yeah. You can be a consultant. You can. <laughs> yeah. this, like, is where, <laughs> this is where we see again why, you know, some um, the. Uh, because he's he's contracted to take out this this uh, Buzazo, I think Jason? is his name. Um, Jason. Yeah, with the hockey mask. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I it, it was more of a round. He was more of a uh, uh, Frosty the Snowman in armor kind of looking. Guy. I thought it looked like a hockey mask. Maybe I think of someone else. There's a guy with the hockey mask. There was a a, a fair number of people with that with the the with rounded full round yeah, helmet yeah, 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 with yeah. just eyes. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, he's uh, he you know he takes this guy out. Uh, this uh, legend to a lot of people out and he's asked to be a part of, of another group and uh, turns them down. But the guy's like pleading with him and grabs him. And that's when he's like, don't fucking touch me. And now that holds so much more weight. What I liked is when like, cause he like punches the, the, the mercenary who was like, Oh, come on. We're like, Don't touch me. And the mercenary goes like, Okay. I'm, I'm, he he yeah. was like, yeah, look, I'm sorry. Man. I was just, <laughs> like, yeah. he, I, you know, it, it wasn't like, Oh, Oh, you think you're tough. Oh, he was just like, I, my bad because okay. yeah. he knows he can't win he's like okay <laughs> that guy's not he's powerful shit yeah um so he yeah he uh slays bazuzo uh, which sounds like the name of a clown and um <laughs> uh, it. yeah and there's someone else there too yeah <laughs> yeah the hawk's eye view getting a, a bird's eye view oh <laughs> yeah hawk's eye view <laughs> <laughs> i like the dedication to it <laughs> Yeah, this is where we finally see Griffith. And we finally see him in the Band of the Hawk. And they're there. I think they've been probably paid by the other side to to be there, I'm assuming. Yeah, right? I think so. Yeah, they mentioned, like, oh, I think that was the guy who ruined everything. But Guts leaves, walks away, comes across them on a path. 
and Corcus, I think is this guy's name. Corcus. <laughs> Corcus? Corcus a is fuck. a fuck. He is yeah. a little fuck, huh? Is Corcus the guy who like just keeps running his mouth? Yeah. 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 He doesn't yeah. stop. That fucking or I'm like, why are you putting up with it? Put a cork yeah. in it, huh? Yeah. Put <laughs> a cork in it. Solid. Yeah, dude. And it's like he's like such a he's he's a clown. He's a douche. He he's is, just a little douche. He's like, let's go fucking take this guy out. I'm gonna take five guys with me, and then hey, all you guys go one after another, and I'm gonna hang back, <laughs> even though I'm the one saying that I'm gonna do it. Uh, he's a fuck, but you know, it was kind of cool to see. I think Griffith and just how he goes about like handling things, because Griffith's like, yeah, sure, go for it. I mean, whatever, do, do what you're gonna do. Do, do whatever you want. Yeah. Is that your Griffith? <laughs> that was another character who talks like that that I realized, like, oh, that's not relevant to this story at all. Yeah, we're talking about his dub voice is so funny. He's like, oh, and the dub in the original, yeah. We yeah. can be power. It's just like so monotone and like yeah. creepy. It's not what I picture when I read him because he's such a complex character. I picture him having a much softer. He's, he's a handsome, beautiful man, too. He scares be, the shit be, out of me. Really? He, ever since, like, he came on page and then just like the more he talks to, like Gus and everyone else like he just has this like like weird power over everyone and he just seems so creepy and like even later on I'm like oh this this guy this guy is not well he's a master of what, manipulation yes that's and, why he's scary yeah and reading people and just like you and know, his convincing eyes them and, to he, do and he's just anything. you know like people that you know it's like the whole like more attractive people can like right. get people to do certain things that they wouldn't normally right. do like he's the fucking master at that right. shit everyone's so no like no one listens to Cody Nope. <laughs> no one does. <laughs> That's but why Megan gets free gift cards. Just That's for, not. <laughs> just what for, have I ever gotten a gift card? I like Megan was like in the middle of saying that, like, no, it's not like I'm not. I'm not like crazy different than you guys. And then the waiter's That's just not like, what I said. The waiter's just like, you are the cutest person in the world. <laughs> oh, that comes did back. Here's a coupon. Yeah. Come back anytime. And it's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, that does just happen, but like not always. Oh, literally? Yeah. You're making it, was like, it sound so much worse. Sir, that didn't, is that server just, didn't even look us in the eyes. Nope. This never happens to me, ever. Look that that. never oh, happens. Oh, didn't you get a free Starbucks one time before okay, you Okay, they over? made an extra <laughs> drink. They made an extra drink and they you're, gave it to me. You, you just accept it. Why, Why would they give me an like, extra drink? I go to Starbucks all the time. I've never gotten an they extra drink. They don't get free shit anywhere. What they are you never, talking they about? They never made an extra drink when I go. This is the way you have to justify this in your head. Like, yeah, I got coupons, but that was it. What about that free drink you got? I just, well, that, I mean, he <laughs> just, he just had, had a drink. He, that guy just had a free drink. Oh, he did. You know how Starbucks just gives drinks to you all the time? Yeah. Yeah. After you talk to them for a little bit, you know that world we all live in. <laughs> Shut up! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> yeah, Megan. I mean, look, it's a world we'll never know, but oh it's a world God. that exists. <laughs> you guys, the server didn't even look me and Josh in the nope. eye. Nope. Didn't even say, "Oh, sorry." No, one she per laughed table. at you no, guys. You guys are making her table. laugh. No, I got yelled at for not having my shoes on. That was a different person. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, a joke will get you a laugh, but a face will get you a free meal. I did yeah. not get a free meal. We had to become Basically. funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did get a free meal. God. <laughs> Why do you have to? We had to become funny just to be acknowledged. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's like to be like, oh, I bombed. Now no one's going to talk to oh me. Oh, my yeah, God. Exactly. <laughs> okay, enough about this nonsense that you guys keep spewing. It is not reality. Nonsense. You have no. It is you have not no reality. You were just like, yeah, that keeps happening. It but literally has happened like twice. Oh, before it only happened once. Yes. And now, because I reminded you of something that happened twice, so how many other times have you thought it was just kind, random gestures? Anyway, you guys. <laughs> you're the Griffith of this one. <laughs> yeah, you're the Griffith. Don't call me that. You're so charming. I'm good. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Megan, I mean Griffith, uh, <laughs> we are um, introduced to him and Casca and Corcus and, um, and the, the, their band of misfits, the band of the Hawks. <laughs> the Island of Misfit Toys. Uh, yeah, the Island of Misfit Toys. And um, the the original Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Guts, <laughs> Griffith, Casca, Corcus. and Corcus. And of course, yeah. Corcus. You can't forget him. Yeah, you can't. The real He's the Reed Richards of the group. <laughs> um, yeah, the brains. <laughs> but uh, we see this, uh, this interaction between Casca and Guts go down. And Casca's able to hold her own. And Guts is... You know, a, a little taken aback by the fact that she is a woman, 
But this makes sense for his this character. This is the only time I've ever believed in the um, the helmet falls off and it's a girl and the person's like, oh, this changes things. Because I'm like, I don't think he's seen a girl. No. I don't think he has a memory, any mental image of what a girl is. Because he's just been fighting dudes. Or even fought one. Yeah. 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 I mean, so especially like, Yeah, one. especially fought one. Like, when he went, you're a girl, I believe that, like, oh, wow, yeah, he's he wouldn't know how to react to that, would he? Yeah, because we've seen it happen in, in other things, and it's always a weird moment. Like, okay, so yeah. what? Um, but, yeah, he being from going from battlefield to battlefield, it must be pretty rare for him if have has ever happened to him at all. And so, he you know, he does take a beat, but then, like, uh, like you said, Megan, he just sort of just goes for it he's like oh okay well it doesn't really change anything he's I like guess. that's wild <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> do the yeah. do the sound yeah huh? do the sound oh <laughs> oh no oh, she wanted you to do your yeah your muscle noise <laughs> oh, man. it's a fan favorite a lot of people at home <laughs> applauding like <laughs> megan you gotta like scream <laughs> no no <laughs> No. Oh my god. That's what guts does. <laughs> yeah, you did kind of look like him a little bit. You didn't. Oh! Um, and then. <laughs> Biting my time. Yeah, I you're know. Really you're really doing a. You pulled a Costco, right? I mean, you a pulled corcus. a Corcus right <laughs> a now. Corcus. God, I'm sorry, Costco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, of course, Griffith has to come down to clean up the mess and, um, you know, is able to take out guts in, in a few blows. Pretty Because, easily. as we all know, dexterity beats strength. Absolutely. Every time. Every time time and that's in the real world too yeah yeah and everybody knows that i'm i'm dexterous <laughs> you're not dexterous you're not, oh. you're not strength um um wisdom <laughs> uh guts gets taken out and by the way i love a good uh effeminate leader okay i love a handsome you know is he is he gay? Is he straight? Like, does he like men? Does he's he got like long women? hair. He's beautiful. You know, yeah. see, he even says, like, Gus is like, oh, you pretty boy. And he's like, love you it. never have a scar on your face. You, you you're too beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> love it, dude. I love it about uh, Mikey from uh, Tokyo Revengers. Mm -hmm. I love it from even, you know, to Game of Thrones, Oberyn. You know, he was he was he was slaying not dragons, literally, but mountains. No, he got slain. He was by, slaying other stuff, slain too. A mountain. Um, oh, is that the Viper? Yeah, the Viper. I saw a yeah. YouTube clip of, oh. of that fight, and I'm like, oh, cool, yeah. Oh, he's using strategy and technique, and oh, that's how he dies. That's, wow. Yeah, it was kind of oh, sad. Oh, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, five, six years later. <laughs> After everyone uh, got dis super disappointed, yeah. and it, it went from being a cultural thing that no one wants to talk about it anymore. It's so funny that, that it happened that way. That's funny, because like, I, I worked at like a you know a restaurant when Game of Thrones was happening like, every day. Like, did you see this episode? Yeah. You have to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. You have to watch this and then the final episode came out and just silence yeah got 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 yeah it's just like <laughs> got yeah. got got i get it just like yeah we have an order up anyway now that we're um uh done with the first guts and griffith interaction slash fight uh guts wakes up in a tent back at the at the base of the band of the hawk before that he has a horrible dream oh my um, god i want a nightmare not dream nightmare yeah. like yeah. nightmare 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what yeah, this is weird but i i love when a character has nightmares from tr uh, traumatic events yeah dude and especially be uh, this well done because it, it is nice to be like that wasn't just backstory yeah if they like showing them having nightmares about it lets me know that like oh, okay so this is it's still a part of their character it wasn't like oh imagine if that happened too yeah, it's, it's not like oh my god. Yeah, he probably has a lot of nightmares about that event. No, it's it's just in the back of his brain constantly, and probably every night he has nightmares about everything. And like even in the anime when I was watching it, it's totally like night and day when it comes to the nightmare. It's kind of just like this, not cute, but like you know, menacing nightmare. And it's kind of Doctor Seuss esque, where it's like crazy things are yeah, happening yeah, in yeah. the anime, and you're like, oh okay, blood and killing. Yeah. He's a baby, and then. And then the manga, it's just like, oh, this made me feel gross. Yeah, in the manga, you have him being, you know, chased by his attacker. Yeah. And then you have something, you know, biting at his leg, and it's the dog, that Gambino's dog, but with Sis's head, and then it's just like... And then Sis is a dog at Gambino's feet, and... Yeah, it's just fucking all... It's all... Fu it's fucked. Yeah, it's pretty it's fucked. fucked. And a lot of, like, nightmare sequ sequences do tend to do that sort of, like, wild, wacky sort of thing, but this does not do that this goes for the raw and the dark 
and it, it makes you feel it. Um, and he wakes up, and at the very end of this uh, nightmare, he does see a woman laying next to him. Yeah, he's kind of like, uh, what's the word when you see your dream happen out, out of body? Oh, like it's, he's like kind of lucid dreaming. Yeah, like lucid dreaming, and he, you see... Oh, 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 out of body experience. Out of body dreaming? Right. Is that right? Astral projecting. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for letting me get yeah, there. Yeah, thanks. He went, <laughs> yeah. I'll give this to you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we see him with a woman which has short hair, so you're like, yeah, that's yeah. probably yeah. Costco. the ultimate tomboy. The yeah. ultimate badass, yeah, the tomboys OG tomboy, and, and don't get enough uh, obsession like mm-hmm. goths do. But tomboys are up there. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to agree. My first crush was on Icebox from the Little oh, Giants. Mine too. Oh mm-hmm. no! Oh no! <gasps> I was about to. That oh, was about no. to be a real bond. I thought your your first you were gonna say your first crush was a tomboy, and mine was. Oh, mine was a tom Icebox from the Little Giants, yeah, but like in the real world. In the real world, not on the screen. not on a lunchbox. No, her name was Icebox. <laughs> Her name was Ice. <laughs> yeah, that was her nickname in the movie because she was a football player. She was wanted to be a girl. She was a girl and she wanted to be a football player. Anyway, <laughs> um, and then he, he wakes up and he's like, "Where am I?" And then he goes out of the tent and you see, you know, the mercenary camp with the band of the Hawks. And first thing he sees is Griffith talking to Casca. And Casca's pissed, dude. Casca's Koska always pissed. Hates guts. Like, hates his, hates his guts. guts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hates her guts. Hates. Yeah, hates her guts. Yeah, hates. Well, she hates guts. Griffith's guts. And I'm like, damn, Costco, I would have taken that fucking job. <laughs> yeah, we she. know. We know. Well, I, I'll, 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 I volunteer. <laughs> yeah. uh, can I? Can I? Yeah, Megan's just there. Like guts, you look kind of sick. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need this. Just yeah. cutting him. Yeah, cutting him <laughs> in his sleep. Developing an anemia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Putting like hot towels on his forehead yeah. while he's passed out. <laughs> you have a fever. Godly. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then this is where, this is what was a little confusing to me too. Griffith is a very, um, you know, all things considered, especially for this time, this world, a progressive person. Inclusive. He lets, inclusive. He lets, um, you know, Casca fight for him where a lot of these other soldiers laugh at her and mock her and give her a hard time for it. But he does say something in this moment that's like, I didn't think that you were that kind of guy, at least not yet. I mean, he basically tells her a woman's place or yeah. a woman, it's a woman's job to like, warm to warm a man yeah and it is like couldn't you have built a? that's what i was like are you fucking with her because Maybe. it's like you could have built a fire or you could have given him a blanket yeah that's why i I never get that where like though you have to strip naked wouldn't it be warmer if she had clothes on yeah 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 well, no, I yeah mean, truly i've been i've heard this as a survival technique in okay. yeah sure if you don't have like a tent and okay, you have fires all around you and- i we have to survive <laughs> I I've, I read it in a book. It's the only yeah. way. Every, every Josh goes on, he gets stranded in the woods. <laughs> corcus move, here. Josh. Yeah. Corcus move, bro. Not a corcus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you telling yourself that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't like this. I don't like this bit. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> anyway, he says that to her, and I, I couldn't believe it. I said, take it back. Yeah, I was like, I, I'm just confused at that. I've never read that. That I is have, like a thing. Truly, that is truly a thing. I just want to let you know that that oh, is a real okay. thing. That it's a woman's place. A woman <laughs> no. Oh. No. That's, wow. wow. Where did you okay. read that? On a forum? Uh, no, absolutely uh, not. Uh, you're part of forums? <laughs> no, I'm part of yeah. subreddits. Yeah, you so, loser, subreddits. You, forums. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> no. You little freaking 4 chaner over there. Don't, uh-huh. don't, don't even. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Naked or yeah, not Anyway, naked. she's pissed and Guts is pissed and Guts is going after Griffith. He hasn't even fully recovered yet. And he's classic Guts. Yeah, classic Guts. He's going after him. He wants out. He wants to move on. He's done with these guys. Fuck these guys. They tried to kill him in the first place. Whether whether they were successful or not, nobody in his mind is going to want him there. Yeah, he's like, I tried to kill you. You're not going to forget that. Yeah, and like, I killed your guy. And I yeah. killed a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's and not no like you're just going to water under the bridge. Like, yeah, no, no one's going to forgive me for that. Yeah, yeah, we have to do something about it. <laughs> we got to so, kill each other. Yeah, and so, you know, Griffith offers him a uh, deal. Let's have a, f- we'll fight. I'll fight you. But if I win, you're mine. You're mine. Yeah. Wink, and, wink. Yeah. And then Guts is like, but if I win, yeah. you uh, you have to leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, it, pretty yeah, fair like, bet. Yeah. But like, if I win, and he's like, if you win, I'll be your, I'll be your, 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 your loyal slave boy. And it's like, <laughs> Guts, he didn't say he that. Did, yeah, Guts, no, Guts, no, no, Guts, no. Guts, Guts, Guts. No, 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 no. Uh, he did look back on the tape. Yeah, yeah, rewind the tape. Rewind it. He, did, like, he just yeah. said you'd be 
Like a anyway, friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a friend, like a comrade. But um, it is a, a, this like interesting panel where like the wind's blowing and you know Griffith's like, "Then you'll be mine." <laughs> and then you s- are mine. And Gus yeah. is like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and they have yeah yeah <laughs> yeah scared but like <laughs> okay. They have their fight and it's it's you know it's a cool fight because. You kind of, I guess, if you know anything about the story, know that Griffith has to win. But it does seem like Guts is holding his own. It goes back and forth. Yeah, I like the part where he's sit- he like on his sword, yeah. you know, and, he's, mm-hmm. and he jumps on his sword as the ultimate, like, fuck you. Yeah. And he's like, you motherfucker, you cast up on my sword. It's like a little childish. They're both yes. like children, yes. honestly. And they they're act all, like it. everybody in the band of the hog, by the way, very young. Their, yeah. their relationship is very similar to just uh, boys becoming friends. Yeah, where yeah. They, they have a, they have a, they fight. At, you remember growing up, where you could just fight with someone like we'll, yeah. we'll be friends for life now, <laughs> for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And and you know, there's even this scene where, and I loved this part where you think Griffith has the upper hand over Guts. Guts is done. Guts is out for the cow. And then you know Griffith's holding his sword to Guts's throat, and Guts just fucking bites the sword. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, "It's not over." Arr. Yeah, I eat knives for breakfast. I eat knives for breakfast. Interesting. Yeah, that was interesting that that was in there. Uh, um, and this is a badass moment for Guts. I mean. This is what I'm thinking. Like maybe the tables are gonna turn. Maybe Guts is, has this in the bag. Maybe he's gonna know? eat the, the knife, and it's gonna be done. Yeah, but he doesn't. Uh, he gets got. Yeah. Inevitably. He had to have gotten got. Um, and so, um, as per the deal, he is now Griffiths, and he's part of the band of the Hawk. And we do see him get a little bit of a a, a challenge. Um, he gets um, what do you call it, Cody? When someone gets like um. um um, when you have to test, you got to give someone a test before they can jump into your gang. Uh, initiation. Initiation. Thank you so much. Rite of passage. Rite of passage. Thank you so much. Uh, he does get a little <laughs> initiation. His rite of passage. Hazing. A, a, a little bit of a hazing. Yeah. Yeah. Where they have to, they're going on this um, this mission and all they have to do is sneak up behind this enemy camp run right through it and their only goal is to just burn all their rations burn everything that they have and then just make a beeline back for the castle and guts has to have one of the hardest job which is holding up holding the back holding the rear and um it's a really hard thing to do most of the band of the hawk are like this guy's gonna die griffith's putting this guy to the the putting him to death basically and, and Casca being smart realizes like no he's doing this because he really trusts this guy yeah yeah, yeah. exactly and Griff is just like everyone calm down he's got this I try and they're like okay and Casca's like this motherfucker gets the back of the fuck yeah she doesn't come around to him at all no <laughs> no, no. All. she's very jealous of she's this like, like newcomer I, I hate you get out of here guess it's like <laughs> First girl. <laughs> yeah, first girl. Yeah. We laid naked together. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah he, I mean, it probably helps. He has that in his trunk card. Yeah. Like, Drunk. I, uh, yeah. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah he doesn't. He actually. really doesn't. He's not thinking of it. He's like, death, death, kill, kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but he does his job. You know, he gets it's he gets a little, um, it's close. It's a little roughed up. Yeah, he gets a little roughed up. Mm-hmm. And Griffith, at, at the last minute, has to come in kind of save him. That's when they're coming out of the forest, they separate, and then all of the cannons and everything from the castle are, are just take out the remaining forces, and they they win, and there's this victory, and there's this celebration, and it's the celebration, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is where, because we go back, Guts is up on top of the, the castle, being emo, being emo Guts. Emo Guts. And he's so cute. Is is he's very cute. He's just sitting there. I was at the party, I know. and he's just like, "This is my life." I, you know, he's just looking out. You can't help but just want to hug him. Yeah, but he you doesn't know? like that. But then he'd say, "Don't touch." Don't me. touch. Yeah, he wouldn't like that. Um, but this is where we see um Pippin and um I wrote down all their names too. Love uh, them, by the way, too. They're the cute. Mercenary bros. Yeah. Yeah. Rick. Rick. Rickert. Rickard? <laughs> Rickard? Yeah. Judeo. They all come up and they all try to coax him down. Like, this is your celebration. This is, you know, we're doing this for you. Come on down. Like, hang out <laughs> with us. He's just like, meow. Yeah. He's, he's like, like, huh? Nah. He's like, nah, nah, nah I'm, doing, I'm doing a thing right now. <laughs> I'm doing a thing. <laughs> and they're like, nah, nah, we're going to hang out. We're going to celebrate. He's like, do not touch me. They're like, all right, all right. Yep, yep. We all got things going on, man. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna, he's we're like, gonna... put me down. Yeah. Put me down. This is like a little kid. He's yeah. like, no, no. And it's like the biggest guy they have. Yeah. And like, he just puts him down and hands him a drink. And he's like, 
Drew Brees, good. He's like, okay. And he does. And, and he, he does. sort of starts to loosen up a little bit. Like, And then we have Corcus's bitch ass oh, talking Corcus. shit again. <laughs> what is that? Like, he's on the sidelines just like, huh? Like, what were you going to do, Corcus? Yeah. You're really going to yeah. do what he did? Fuck no. Because Corcus was talking shit the whole time. Oh, I only talk shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit is more like it. He needs to eat shit. Yeah, I mean, is what he needs to do. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, so you know, he starts to loosen up and he starts to warm up to these people, and that is is what I mean by you know we were talking about the 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 brand of of the sacrifice and how you know we we know because of the previous arc that he has that, and we know what that means. But how does he lose his arm? How does he get the brand? It's also a thing of like up until he ran into the band of the hawk it was like oh i see how this guy grows up to be the guts we saw mm-hmm. but now it's like i don't see how this guy grows up to be the guy <laughs> exactly we saw. yeah so yeah when does his origin end <laughs> yeah. because it should end right now and it, and we're done <laughs> and we're done because yeah that something you know that that means that something else has to happen yeah and i he's mean finally catching a freaking break yeah he's kind of i mean finally and he's treat, being treated like a human being for the first time in his life and getting compliments at his work and he's never received that and he's having a camaraderie for the first time he really doesn't know how to do it yet but you see him slowly but surely coming together with even Griff, griffith he sees him as like oh like this is someone that's stronger than me first of all which i haven't really met yet I, I killed the guy who was stronger than yeah. me <laughs> so yeah. i mean he just you know he's killing all these people that have no chance against him and this guy is like oh yeah oh he's yeah I, I, I respect him and speaking of griffith too it's this part it's at this point that we see this like really fun scene between the two of them the, in, the, in, in the bath area. Yeah. yeah 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 i was like that is so sweet it's so sweet and he's like no i don't want to do that and he's like yeah, they start slashing. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Like, well, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to be able to see him let loose and be a kid and be okay, give himself permission to have fun, even though he's doing it like kind of against his will a little bit. Like he doesn't know how to have fun. <laughs> yeah, no. That is the first yeah. time he has ever played. Ever. And I don't even think he knows why he's doing it or what it is that he's doing, but he's just sort of like when they're finally tuckered out and they're sitting there and Guts <laughs> finally picks up one more bucket and throws it on, on Griffith's head. It's just so freaking sweet, It man. is very sweet. I was smiling. I was like, oh. I mean, he was yeah. like naked the whole time. I know. Thank God they don't, you know, they don't draw in the genitals because <laughs> yeah, they that, were full frontal. Yeah, yeah. He was like, come on, bathe with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a splash fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought, I mean, I could have read that. I could have read four chapters of that, you know, just them, not that. But just hijinks that Griffith and Guts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Where yeah. Griffith's yeah. just teaching Guts how to play games. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. You know how, just like, the classic, he like throws a ball and gets like, I don't want this ball. Yeah. And he starts playing catch and he doesn't know what catch yeah. is. Yeah, and he's like, stop throwing this to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to, I I have to catch it every time you throw it at me. You know how they have a little bonus like in between chapters? Yeah, like, oh, I would love it, Chibi. Yeah, Them that, Chibi. Yeah. Chibi wow. Guts. Chibi, Chibi guts. guts. But this is also another important scene because we do see for the first time a bailet and we see that it's mm. around Griffith's neck. Yeah, and this is why seeing uh, the the Black Swordsman arc before this is is one of the parts. Like, is it the, the, I guess if you didn't, see that first this would all be like oh what's going on building up to it but then in like reading through it chronologically it's like okay well that egg ain't ain't good news Mm -hmm. and we know that something happened with them Mm -hmm. so what's gonna happen here and it's unclear if Griffith is aware of what the egg is or not is he telling the truth he said he's like yeah this is an egg I bought an egg from and this is oh that that's the thing what is uh in the Black Swordsman arc, the guy's like, oh, he bought it off a off a gypsy caravan, which you're not supposed to say, but that's what they said in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and then when Griffith is asked where he got that face egg, he's like, oh, I bought it off a caravan. <laughs> there we go. So two people in like decades yeah. apart have been like, oh, I got it off a caravan. A fortune yeah. telling um, caravan. But, caravan. <laughs> but this is a very important thing. So how are they just getting it from care that's the thing i don't know either wouldn't this be something you go into a cave searching for like it doesn't well i mean i think it's clear that someone is is pulling strings someone is doing something Uh. if 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 
Griffith's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what to believe at this point. Um, But he also says like, oh, and she told me (laughs) that one day if I have this egg, I'll rule the world. It will grant me the... The mo- I will be the most powerful man and I will rule the world and Gus is like, yeah, we should, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Griffith has these moments yeah, where... We should, we should, we should have another splash fight. <laughs> He's like, He's like, like yes, I would give up anything <laughs> for my dream and Gus is like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. That's what I like about you, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like this about you. This is a fun day. Let me see that I thing, love hanging way. out with my buds. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he gives him the bailet too and he's like, uh, the, that one eye opens on it Ugh. and then he throws it back and he's like, yeah. She told me it was kind of alive, you know? And it's like... Whatever. <laughs> it's like, Whatever. what? I keep it around my neck, close to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> keep the face egg close to your heart is what my mama always said. Yeah, it's what well, my, my mom mama always by. said. And yeah, he just has these moments where, I mean, ongoing too, where he'll just... Like, he's like, oh, I'm a cool guy. Yeah, I'm a in fucking cool guy. We're playing water fights. We're having, but, but one day I will rule the world. I think that's what, um, I think either uh, Rickert or one of the other Hawks says to, to Guts when he's on top of the castle. He says that, like, he asks him about Griffith, like, what is his deal? And yeah, he's just he's like, honestly, weird. couldn't tell you, man. <laughs> couldn't tell you. He's a beautiful man. <laughs> yeah. And he, he wins every fight. Just when I think he's a hardened warrior, he smiles like a kid, yeah. dude. I don't freaking get the guy. Yeah. Griffith, he loves splash fights. <laughs> he thinks you should do what you want. He loves his face egg, and he can't get enough of Corcus. <laughs> he can't get enough of Corcus. <laughs> yes, dude. Um, so get that on a t-shirt. Yeah, get that whole thing on a t-shirt. <laughs> It's not, uh, bad. it's not bad. Four things Griffith loves. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, it's like it's like the uh, those videos. Uh, what is it called? Where yeah. it's like the uh, Moto. What is it? Fuck. It's I know on you're YouTube. Talking about, it's no, called. TV TV Mojo. Mojo. Oh, watch Mojo. Yeah, watch watch Mojo. Mojo. It's like four things yeah. Griffith can't <laughs> live, live without. without. Yeah, yeah. One. Corkins. <laughs> Two. His face egg. Yeah. I mean, we gotta make that video. Yeah. yeah. We could. <laughs> we really yeah, could we and should. should. Reach uh, out to them. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna reach out to them. I'm gonna reach out to uh to the big the, channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Reach out to the people at Mojo. <laughs> really get that working. Um but yeah, I mean, and then I think it's after this point too that that we get another flashback. I mean not flashback, another flash forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um because I think Guts, it's about like three years. Yeah, Guts is uh, continuing to rise through the ranks of the Hawks. He becomes the commander of the the Raiders of the Hawks or the Hawks Raiders. And has all these people under his command. And it's so well done and masterfully done that we're seeing this moment and Gus starting to warm up. Let me get this cut to him in battle. And he does the one thing that someone who was grown wouldn't do, but he's trying. You know, he's he, you know, he leaves his men to go fight on his own, and he really kind of puts to according to Casca their entire operation in jeopardy, or, or at least he could have done that. And he's him and Casca get into a huge fight about it, and then him and uh, you know Orcus is like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> great, great choice for your squad leader there. Yeah, uh, God. Griffith and Casca. Yeah, he's and like Casca just like beating him up at this point. Yeah, well, no, no, it's almost like, and I'm paraphrasing. He's like. Guts, man. What's his deal, dude? <laughs> and then like, Costco's like, what's your deal? <laughs> you know? She go away, away. Yeah. Corcus. Yeah. She's the only one, like, immune to Corcus' <laughs> like, weird charm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we love him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's the best. Yeah. And they get into that fight, and Costco's pretty much just like, you fucking idiot. Like, you don't care about anyone else but yourself. You're a fucking wild dog. And then he just grabs her, and he's like, say that again. I dare you to say that again. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's just like literally, and then he just turns and he's like, "I'm trying," and you're like, oh. well, "Anytime yeah, I mean, he gets yeah. serious, my heart just aches." Well, yeah, because that's when uh, Griffith comes in and Casca, you know, he says, "You're too easy on him all the time." He's clearly your favorite, which I can't tell if she's jealous. I'm sure she oh, is. She's oh no, she's jealous. But I don't yeah, think she's jealous because she's like, I don't think I don't see it as like a romantic jealousy. I think think of it as like you know, she. This is someone. Who she like in a Gambino esque way? She wants their approval, and she's seeing someone else get all the attention from the person she wants the attention. Mm-hmm. From. And it's a man. It, well, and it's a man. Yeah, it's like I. It's the whole internal struggle between her. 
and a beautiful man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and but you know, and guts again, like you said, pleads not pleads, but does like feel the need to tell uh, Griffith, like, dude, I am different. I'm not the same. Like, I care about these guys. Yeah, yeah. having guts apologize is like a yeah very because like you just this you assume a character like this wouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah, he respects him, and he's trying to tell him, like, look, I, 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 I tried. Yeah. I mean, you, you, and he's trying to plead his case because obviously he's known Casca for way longer, and you know, of course, hearing your like old friend talk yeah. about someone you kind of only know, and you're like, okay, they might pick their side over. I want to plead my case to this guy. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, it's again, it's a weird position to see guts in, but it shows how much he respects Griffith and how much you know he wants to prove that he's not the same person he was when he came. And you know, it's it's after this that we start to see because you know Griffith had let on that he wanted his goal, his dream is to have his own kingdom, which is something thought to be impossible for a commoner, especially much less a mercenary on top of that. Um, but he does start climbing through the ranks. Yeah, he does you, start. You see him start making moves because yeah. his friendship with Guts is is genuine because we were given rules of the way the world works mm-hmm. in the first couple of volumes. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he said that he's the one who gave him the brand. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that. That's why, like, the the God Hand offered the Count to do to his daughter what Griffith did to Guts. That's mm-hmm. that's what they say. Like, I, that would be a spoiler if you didn't read it in chronological order. <laughs> yeah. But they, you, we know this going in. That's what happened. But they say you, it can only be with someone you genuinely care about and love. So it is this interesting thing of like he isn't manipulating, and he's not lying about like caring about him. He According to be. the way this world works, yeah. he didn't. Like, he might be looking for someone to care about. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, everywhere else, it's free free range. I, I don't think, I mean, he's kind of, like, I, I reading it and watching it, I was like, this guy, I mean, knowing what you know before, but you're like, there's something up with him. Well, yeah, for sure. And, well, I mean, we know something's up with him for sure because we saw him literally exactly. in this, you know, other dimension with yeah. these other, like, <laughs> beings. And yeah. it's like, how the fuck did a human go from that to there? I, yeah. I just don't... And, yeah, to see to know the way it works and to, like, you have to, like... I mean, it had to be... The Count, back to the Count, the Count was trying to, you know, sacrifice guts and they were like, no, no, no. It has to be something you really, really care about. It has to be something you have a really strong bond with. So, again, yeah, looking back at all these conversations, it does recontextualize it because, you know, Griffin, Griffith can't be, um, <laughs> can't be forcing this. He ha- yeah. It has to be genuine. It has to be. Um, so I believe he's genuine with guts, but I do think he is not genuine with other people. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he's getting knighted and he's getting recognized by nobility and and, and noblemen. And um, they're sent off on this other mission uh, where we see for the first time, and I think they see for the first time, not we, they see a supernatural being, which is Nosferatu Zod, who is the final boss of Dragon's Dark, <laughs> yeah. if I recall correctly. Which, and I think you've said it before too, that the creator of that game is like pretty... Uh, up front about that. No, he said I I made a Berserk game because <laughs> he like he based the story off a D and D campaign. He would always play with his friends, uh-huh. and then it's like there's a whole class where you only have you the only weapon you would get is a big sword, yeah, and then all the moves are like references to Berserk. And he's like, yeah, uh, <laughs> I got I got I got a deal, and then we got, we got the, you can wear their armor, and he's just so like. That's so cool, though, man. I know. Yeah. That's the th- this is a, a thing where if anything references Berserk, they're so like happy about it. It's not something that's like, like even, like no matter how many people do it, anyone's like, yeah, I got a Berserk reference. <laughs> yeah. in there. They're not trying to hide it. Like, no. they, they can't wait to like share it with people. Yeah, because yeah. it's just so it's so good. Yeah, it's Everyone just like yeah. It. I mean, I based that monster off that because I really like that arc. Uh, did you guys read Berserk? You guys <laughs> read? Yeah, that's, that's how every game dev is. It turns yeah. out. But this and this guy too, because I mean, obviously, I've never played that game. But I mean, this guy is to the art too. Like he's drawn so well, and he's so intimidating and menacing and huge. And he's at not. This is like before his transformation too, where he's just like this. Like, and you don't know if it's legend because the 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 other soldiers are outside talking about this guy 
only through the stories that they've been told. Like he's been around for hundreds of years. Like he's killed all these people. And I'm like, this is, this is all bullshit, you know? <laughs> and then they get in there and it's like, no, this guy is a real legit mo- monster. Yeah, Guts is yeah. like, cuss- he's, <laughs> yeah. He's oh, we thought you were like a guy with like a bear skin <laughs> yeah, on his helmet, yeah. and people call him the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's like a, that's kinda... like you know fighting him, and he's like, oh yeah, there's no <laughs> way this guy is human yeah. at all. No way, I can't even stand a chance of this fool right now. But he does say too. I mean, he's obviously taken with guts. I mean, he says that this is the most action I've ever had in in hundreds of years. Like you see him literally, he has this. Fing- the, our introduction to him is his fingers through the eye sockets of a dead soldier and he's just dragging them and there's this wall of human heads and piles of bodies all around him like hundreds of soldiers and Guts is actually able to like keep up with him for like a second which yeah. is like huge I like that oh, I, I love when stories do that with like a villain or like someone of like super powerful being that's been around for like thousands of years and like one human's just able to put up a fight and they're like I'm having fun yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're like, I don't want you to have fun, but it's fun for me to read and watch it. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is. And and you kind of, you know, you're kind of like rooting for guts, obviously, like and you're kind of proud of him, like for showing this, you know, giving this guy a little bit of a fight. But inevitably he gets his, his ass kicked. And which I like. Guts guts usually gets his ass oh, yeah. kicked a little bit. Which uh, is, yeah, you know, yeah. It's not like I'm the best. He's not invincible. I'm just a human that was Really messed up as a child. Oh, really yes, yeah. it is nice that like uh, that's why you know that that pro that prologue scene where it's like oh, that's end game guts. Yes, but exactly. Here, here's him, both arms, both arms, which a uh, huge disadvantage it would turn out. Yeah, like, like at the second he loses that arm, I think he's <laughs> he's set. I mean, it's really an upgrade. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm. Um. It was just like a robot arm, you know. You wish you had two of them. Like a ro- no, just like one robot arm. I mean. Megan, um, <laughs> we, but then Griffith comes to save him, um, and even Griffith gives him a run for his money. They both give him even more of a run for his money, and it is cool seeing them fight together because Griffith's always, you know, higher in the ranks. Uh-huh. They're all doing their own things, but now we get to see them kind of like together. And he's like, "You go that way, I'll yeah. go this way," and they have like this instant like they understand what's happening and how to. How do they fight they're like well the together? strongest people there. And they're like, dexterity yeah. and strength united. Nothing can beat that. Except for a lot of strength. Oh, except for yeah. Uh, yeah. Corcus. Except Maybe Corcus. Yeah, where, where was Corcus? Corcus <laughs> <laughs> and that's when and we that's see Corcus going to show up. <laughs> he comes in and whoops ass. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, oh, that's why they put up. <laughs> Saves the day. Powerful scene, powerful character. <laughs> <laughs> Could have said it better myself. Cody. <laughs> People that don't even like, they're like, oh, Quirky sounds like a cool guy. <laughs> yeah. If there's anybody watching this who hasn't read the story, they're like, God damn, I, who's this Quirky? Quirky, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of just his name. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's also another key moment in the story because of what ends up happening. Obviously, they're both sort of, they, but they both can't handle Nosferatu Zod. They cut his arm off too. They do yeah. do some damage. Yeah. They, yeah. Darn. Is that why is that significant? Well, Guts, uh, oh, right, 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 uh, right, yeah. right, right. So Guts was probably like, "That's a good idea." Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's where he gets the idea. That's, that's the one that I want to lose. Yeah, yeah, you were reading that, you go, <gasps> "Yeah, that's past shadowing." <laughs> past, past foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. Um, two shadowing. Two shadowing. Two shay. Is what they said. <laughs> <laughs> not not a bad way to end that. Not, not, uh, a bad way. <laughs> very, not a very bad way to end that at all. Uh, <laughs> not for us. T- just let me say something. I'm, he went, he went, I'm punctuating. What, he went, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I'm punctuating. You know what, he went, what the hell? Just, just let me let me finish the thing. Let, I'm, I'm letting you finish your what thing. The fuck? <laughs> just stop. The, let me say. Or, I'm sorry. I, I'll be better. I'll be better. That yeah, was be, a, that was a. You're, uh, bra- you're being a real corkus yeah, right now. Uh, that was a corkus move, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, very powerful move. Very powerful <laughs> move. Very powerful character. That's where the, yeah, very powerful move. <laughs> Loves its face egg. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but speaking of the face egg. Oh yeah. Um, that's oh, Nos- yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, Nos- yeah. Nos- yeah. Zod, um, impales uh, or 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 goes to kill Griffith and and is about to just murder him and sees just sees the bailet just catches a glimpse of it and just immediately is like I. Yeah, I didn't even read it as fear, though. I, I read it more as he's like, 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, I see. I, oh, I... you got the face egg from the traveling caravan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Winks because at him. It would have been interesting, and that's what I like about it even more, because I feel like in the hands of any other, other writer, it would have been like this powerful being looks at this Baylin and goes like, oh, <gasps> the mark of the not beat oh not my big God. monster <laughs> around them. Yeah. But he looks at it, and he just kind of smiles, and he's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> no one knows, but we know. <laughs> but we know. Me and you know. I'm gonna tell your friend a little thing here. Yeah. yeah. And that little thing is what just... came first, <laughs> the chicken or the face or egg. the face egg? Or the face egg. He's you like, decide. Let me just before I get out of here, let me just say something real quick. Um, if you can said to be a true friend to this man, <laughs> then take heed. When his ambition collapses, death will pay you a visit, and a death you can never escape. And then he grows giant wings and flies away, and everyone's like, he made that up on the spot? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> well, I guess when you've been alive for 100 years, you pick, pick a few things up. That was yeah. beautiful. That was really beautiful. Oh, come God. back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come, stop flying away every time you say something super Ooh. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but this also foreshadows or past foreshadows to what we see later, and it's this, everything is circling around this bailet thing and, and and we're just getting little peaks of it here and there and at the beginning of the chapters when we see those like sort of graphite drawings those beautiful beautiful drawings uh we're, we're seeing like all this text about the bailet and all this text about um guts's sword and it's sort of about you know causality and all these things and it's just like berserkality <laughs> yeah sure yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Corkasality. So, okay, we're going to move on. The final element. The final element. Yeah, on the great m- story. I mean, great character. <laughs> yeah, you really... You can't even remember. Yeah. Oh, You're dang so it. You're so good you can't Important remember. Important character. Nope. Oh, shit. Oh, my shit. God. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, powerful. We'll, we'll powerful character, powerful story. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's like you're a fan of it, but you get <laughs> butchered it. Um. So oh, he uh, he I gets. Mean, uh, no, Josh said that actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody sees <laughs> and what has hell, ears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who said it? Um. Anyway. Uh. So we see. I mean, him give guts this prophecy flies away, and guts is like, and, oh no, Griffith is just like. That guy just says stuff. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. Well, actually, he's passed out. <laughs> At and, this point, yeah. Yeah, and Casca says, you know, the worst thing you could possibly say in that moment to Guts, which is exactly the thing that Gambino said to him right before he was killed, which is that uh, you should have been the one that died. Yeah, she's you, always grunting, she's always running to him and being like, oh my God, is he okay? Is he okay? It's your fault! Yeah. <laughs> it's always Guts' fault. It's always Guts' fault. And I think at this point, too, Guts is kind of like... <laughs> I already heard that one. <laughs> you know? Give me a new material. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Literally. <laughs> literally. Um, but uh it's even it's even at this point too when he's like recovering, we get to see like the hawks around nobility and how they're not all really cut out for it or, or for sure not used to it. Especially guts. And he goes up and he tries to, you know, just visit Griffith, but he's being visited by all these noblemen. And, and, and Griffith's just like, yeah, I'm okay. And he's just so comfortable in this setting. Like he's just. Oh yeah, well he thrives. He yeah. thrives in this setting because yeah. he's just, you know, this this man, this yeah. this beautiful man. And beautiful, everyone's like, are you man. are you okay? And he's as long as flowing. He's like, I'm fine. <laughs> he's like tossing his hair back and forth. All the nobles are like. Oh, there was to, like, he's oh, so cool. <laughs> he's so cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we see guts sort of throw these guards aside, and he doesn't really get it. And Casca's frustrated with him again because he's like, "You're gonna, you're gonna ruin everything." Griffith has taken us this far, and you're embarrassing us. Yeah, everything that we do reflects off of him now. So cut yeah. the shit, guts. Yeah, guts is like. Oh. I can't do anything right with yeah. this girl. He gets emotional. He gets upset. And then they have this like, I don't know how to talk to women. <laughs> I, can't, all, I bet all women are like this. Is <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, he's just like, God damn it. You really can't win with her. I mean, because I mean, he is, you know, he, he's doing stuff that he shouldn't be with, especially with the guards. I mean, he shouldn't. Have, I mean, I love it, though. That. I love a character like that. Who's just like, these rules are stupid. And I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. He even says, this is my friend. I'm just visiting a friend. You know, he's no different to me now than he was when I met him. Like, just because you think he's hot shit right now. Like, why? He just doesn't, he doesn't understand or agree with, like, all this hierarchy. Yeah, and that line where, like, Casca's crying because she's so mad. And he's like, I should be the one 
I, I, I want to cry. <laughs> well, yeah, and maybe, you know, maybe. I haven't cried in, in years. Well, I mean, maybe that's a, a part of it, too, is now she, you know, she feels like she's constantly babysitting this guy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we see, you know, this moment that uh, Griffith and Guts have, like, on this balcony overlooking things. And he's basically just saying that he, um, Guts wants an explanation as to why he keeps saving him. And he's like, I, I don't have to explain myself. I, I just, I'm saving you because I'm saving you. And there needs yeah. no explanation. And you don't owe me anything you don't owe me in exchange. Anything. Unconditional it, love. It is yeah. a thing. That, yeah. Guts like, what? Well, what do I? Yeah, like he doesn't understand what that is. It's like, why do you? Why did you say like? Because you were, because you were in trouble, my friend. And Gus is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's really getting, like you said, this like unconditional love. It's always been about money, and it's always been about like killing people for this or or for some sort of gaining your in the, either either rising in the ranks or you know, there's always been something. You're, you're, no one's doing anything out of the kindness of their heart, not in Guts's life. And so when someone's like, yeah, you don't owe me shit, dude. I, you know, I'm your friend. He's kind of just like, I don't know how to ha- take that. I yeah. don't know how to handle What's that. What's a friend? Yeah, but let's start there. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and you know, Guts um, and, and uh, Griffith, after their conversation, the Hawk is invited to, the band of the Hawk is invited to this hunt. And that's where we, you know, we meet Julius, Count Julius, and Count Julius is just a jealous nobleman who is being... Borderline wacky sitcom character. Yeah, <laughs> borderline, yes. Who's being manipulated by the Varys of this story. Yeah. Um, Eggman. Eggman. Mm. Um, Eggman. Um, he's being, you know, fed little pieces of information from this other, you know, this other, the Varys guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's basically saying, like, yeah, how are you going to let this guy, you know, in? How are you going to let this guy, f- this this commoner, rise through the ranks like this is unacceptable everyone like, kind of feels that way too and then we does. and we get like a little glimpse of the king which is completely different from the count yeah <laughs> and he's just like this cool guy he's, he's just cool. like a cool Down king earth, yeah. yeah he's just like i like this view and then we see a glimpse of the princess the princess and too, she's just like, like looking around yeah, yeah of course yeah. and he's just Who like let me help you and he's just like this magical man and she's like i've never seen anyone like you you have white hair you have white <laughs> hair so elegant you have so a well, rich like, backstory rich backstory <laughs> yeah. commoner mercenary never lost a war in your life yeah. i mean you got all the you're marking all the boxes yeah. Yeah. and the way he talks to her it is like okay this is this is part of his plan exactly here. i've never been able exactly. to I, like i've always questioned his intentions especially with guts and Casca and them but with her it's no question like he's for sure putting on a front with her yeah and he's like what is love but uh, a <laughs> dream th- that doth feel She's and like, then oh. she's like, his hair is so beautiful. Yeah. He's so smart. She almost trips and he like catches <laughs> yeah. her. And then, yeah. she's like, oh, I, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then even Guts in the manga, he does like a little smirk. He's yeah. like, you sly dog. Yeah, you sly dog. And it's so funny. <laughs> um, but this is where when they go on the hunt, Julius has been given this idea that like it'd be a shame if he was hit with an arrow. It'd be a shame if something were to happen. So, Things happen on hunts. Yeah. People get all shot. The time. They happen all the time. And the arrows hit people. Uh, what, what would happen? And then he That's just still doesn't it. get it. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. like, that, if there, it, is there a plot <laughs> that I must stop? <laughs> If there was, certainly a poison that I left a on the table. plot? And he's so dumb. He just doesn't understand. Yeah. He keeps asking like, I don't, and he's like, okay, I'm not going to spell it out for you, bro. You need to figure out yourself. Yeah, he breaks down, imagine. Yeah. He breaks down, he's like, okay. <laughs> kill him. Yeah, kill him. I'm saying, I'm saying kill yeah. him. Yeah. Thank with. you. <laughs> he's like, with? He's like, a sword. And they're both like, a- arrow. Arrow. A poisonous arrow. Got it. A poison arrow. <laughs> a poison arrow. I have a guy. <laughs> and he does have a guy. Theoretically. And they do this, 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 this In guy. Theory, uh, if this were to happen, <laughs> this detailed cartoon plan. doodle drawing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he does have a guy. The guy does show up on the hunt, and they do successfully, uh, at least they think successfully, enact their plan. And mm-hmm. they they pierce Griffith's armor, and everybody freaks out. Which, by the way, it looked pretty thick armor. Um, I mean, it Griffith, went straight through though. Well, that's what <laughs> yeah. crossbows were created to pierce body armor. Okay. Wow. So he went, Brah! and then he was like, oh, and then That's, he falls, and you're and like, again, oh, he's that, dead. Yeah. Well, and he's dead, too, because if it even grazed him in the slightest, if it even poked him or pricked him, yeah. the poison would get in, and he'd be dead. Therein lies yeah. the beauty of poison. Uh, but but poison's also expensive, which is, you know, 
how they come to find uh-huh, out who did it. Uh-huh. But also, it was that pesky bailiff. Like, and he just gets up all casual and he's like, yes. And he like rises from the dead. They're like, oh my God, you're fine. He's like, it was poisoned. A powerful poison A powerful, that. expensive poison. Not enough huh. to poison a face egg. No. <laughs> everyone's like, damn Nothing it. Yet. Everyone's kind of getting it at this point. Well, no, I think no, no one's getting it except for Guts because Guts is the one who heard that prophecy and it's echoing in his mind. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't... I think Corcus says something. He's like, wow, that thing wards off death. Be- or, I, honestly, I bet he does. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's always yeah. talking shit. And Corcus, he's like, who was just with Griffith and the princess. Yeah, just there. Yeah, Why? On the hunt, why? on this royal hunt. Yeah. Okay. Like, why was he involved? You, you two and were like, who's going to come? All right. And he Guts. yells. He yells at Guts God. at one point. He's like, stop doing this. You're making us look bad. I'm like, you're making everyone look bad. Well, no, bad. he's like, we've earned this. He's like, I'm done with fighting. Like, this is what we've been fighting for. Yeah, they're like, like we don't have to it. worry about us dying right and now. Guts we're having like, fun. Yeah, Guts is like, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to scream at more foxes or something. Yeah. I, the, the dark comedy came in when it's like, okay, because... Everyone's like, "Oh, I think someone tried. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone tried to kill the princess, and Griffith took the bullet for her. Yeah. Th- not, we, those don't exist yet. They took the crossbow for her, and uh, the, it just cuts to the count being like, he got a promotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the opposite of what we were trying <laughs> we to do. We were supposed to kill him. <laughs> We just made him look so freaking cool. Right he now. made it look like he rescued the princess again. <laughs> and the God guy, damn it. even the other, even the assassin was like, "I did it." Though. Yeah, he was like, "I did it," and I don't know how it did not work. Yeah, you I, saw it. I pierced it. How was it. I supposed to know? Was it hit that little tiny? I egg? was not found out. Like, yeah. You told me to shoot at his heart, and I shot at his heart. Yeah, he's like, "Leave me." I don't give a fuck about you anymore. And yeah. then he leaves. Time for plan B. We try to blow up the king and Griffith. <laughs> he stopped he st- it? Yeah, he stopped. It just keeps escalating. Yeah. Um, but also, in all seriousness, this is where the story takes another free... It did get a little funny and slapsticky for a second, but this is where it takes a, a, another super dark turn. And it's because Griffith is obviously getting wise. He's starting to play his games. He's aware that people are trying to take him out. He's reading. And he knows. Yes. He's and a he full knows. ass library. He's full like, library. okay, I'm going to put my ponytail up and, and get to the bottom oh, yeah. of this. That's how you know he's eh. ready for business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then uh, he just comes in. He's like, hey, everything cool in here? You got a lot of books? And he's like, oh, yes, um, I have a lot of books as well, but I want you to do something for me. Um, can you kill a man? Which to Guts, to be in all fairness, Guts is like, sure. Yeah, Guts is like, you didn't have to ask me. Just order me yeah. to do it and I'll all fucking right. do it. Just yeah. like all, He's like smiling. He's like, what a Also, yeah. we're mercenaries. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Absolutely. That's not a moral issue. Yeah. Didn't have to bring me into a room to tell me that. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have to. Why is that in secret? All we do is kill people. Yeah. We have a hand signal. Yeah, it's literally that. how we got into this library. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we got here by being good at killing him. <laughs> yeah. But it's because he's asking him to kill Julius, who he's aware is the one that poisoned him with the arrow because of how expensive it is. And he's done his research and he's gone back and he's found it out. And so he tasks Guts with this mission. And Guts, you know, happily agrees. Happily agrees, shows up to do the job and gets the job done. But as before, uh, you know, he actually does what he's there to do. He's he's sort of doing some recon, and he sees Julius with his son, um, who he starts to kind of see himself and his relationship with Gambino in. He starts to see Julius as this tough love father to his son because he's you know sort of trying to groom him for royalty and to take to be an heir. And so he's he's kind of in that training montage. He's or that that training sort of scene. He's he's beating him around like Gambino beat him around. When he's and, taking out his frustrations of the whole situation right. on mm-hmm. his kid, because he's like, if I if I fail, you're the only thing I have left. So you better chin up, yeah. bitch. And yeah. the kid's just like, okay. <laughs> and and you know, Guts is on the roof, and he's sort of like, it, it's he's sort of taken out by it. Like mm-hmm. he, he kind of zones out, and he kind of like has this like flashback, and he kind of has to like shake it off of him. Um, and he does, and he goes in to uh, his chambers at night to kill him and um, does. But as he does, the door opens. We see a silhouette and Guts instinctually, because he's been told and knows that he can't be seen by anybody or else this mission has failed, just rams his sword right through that person. And that person, unfortunately, was Julius's son, who he saw himself in. Not the boy. And the horror... On Guts's face and the shock. And his, the kid's face. And he the kid's face. He just got stabbed. He's just like, 
uh, yeah, the kid, yeah, the kid was definitely the most shocked out. Yeah, n- yeah. yeah, and he didn't die right away either. He was like enough time to realize exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. Gus is staring at this child's face, and I don't think he's killed a kid before. I think that's where. I he, mean, that's a good point. I don't. He was think always he the has. baby of the battlefield. Mm, yeah, baby dude. of the battlefield. Mm. Oh, that could that's, be his. Yeah, kind that, of. That was beautiful. his title. Yeah. yeah. Um, but dude, I mean, like, it's just he was born in a battlefield. Yeah. He sees like love is a battlefield. He sees yeah, love is a battlefield. He sees like this kid, and he sees like this this he's ta- he's it's him that's taking the life from this kid, this kid who he saw himself in, and it's just like it's so, so knowing and loving guts is it's so hard to like see him have to deal with that yeah. and to watch him process that. And yet again, he's just doing something because someone ordered him to do it, and then he's obviously he doesn't want he just never wanted to kill people. It's just well, all he knows. It's all he knows, and, and he just all, killed yeah. an innocent person. I mean, I don't know. On the battlefield, is different because it's like a you know a common thing. We're both fighting to the death to win. This yeah. kid had nothing to do with it, yeah. and he saw his backstory and saw himself in him. And yeah, I mean it's. It's at this point, too, that, like, you see just how troubled and how hurt and how complex Guts's emotions are. And it, it, it's just, it was another panel that just, like, kind of took my breath away a little bit. Yeah. And it made me hurt for him. Um, but he, you know, uh, uh, other guards spot him and he has to, he's on the run and he narrowly escapes and Once he slips again. into a, a gutter. Also kills, like. 20 guards oh yeah. Well, yeah well fuck those guys yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that was one of those that was uh, one of those classic things of like i mean they used to be kids yeah but they you know but they're not kids currently you know okay i mean he was gonna grow up to be an it's adult like, and then you would have been okay with killing him. it's like the whole thing of like would you go back and kill hitler as a baby yeah that's not a moral issue yeah at all no i think moment. everyone would have uh, ba- i mean you say that but if you're looking over at a little baby i mean but you know the you know, you know what's what going he's to capable happen of. if you don't do anything i mean I mean, yeah. And also, it'd be so easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not like, oh, I mean, you're going to have to sit there for like an hour strangling. It's like, okay, you know. Cody. We got you're it. You're talking about saving a bunch of lives over just like a solid punch. I <laughs> okay. <think. laughs> this is pretty... your hero. <laughs> this is your hero. This is the Cody gang. Yeah. Where's the Cody gang now? Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, and so he's you know we got another dream sequence, and this dream sequence is even more intense than the last. It's got Nosferatu Zod in it now, mixed with his attacker, mixed with Gambino, mixed with all these things. And you know, I mean, just when you think the band of the hawks doing better, guts is doing better, everything's better, it's like you know, he's yeah, he's I'm so happy that the manga again. ends there and uh nothing <laughs> yeah. else happens. That was so cool. Yeah. That was that was tight. Very tight. Um, but while all this madness is happening, um, Griffith is talking to the princess and he's going on about dreams and he's going on about what his dreams and what dreams are to him. And this is beautifully written, you know, sort of dialogue about dreams and how, you know, every like, you know, we're all a martyr for our dreams and everybody lives for a dream, dies for a dream like it's Meanwhile, just, the princess is just drooling. She's like, yeah. I mean, yeah, she's infatuated. Right. I've never met someone like you. Yeah, and and uh, Guts goes to tell um, Griffith what had happened and, you know, gets stopped by Casca again. <laughs> and uh, Because she's literally on Guts duty, it seems like. 100, yeah. 100% well, because he's at this, like, fancy schmancy party right. and no, he's I, yeah. just covered in blood and he's like, I have to go report my mission. And she's like, no, you're not going to do that. He's having his own thing. We're in our own place. Yeah. And he just goes anyway. Go have a drink with Corcus. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's everyone been asking wants to about do that. you. Yeah. Yeah, Corcus is hanging out with nobility, having the time of his <laughs> life. Yeah. Uh, why can't you be more like Corcus? Everybody needs to be a little more. Every, look at Corcus. Take a note, okay? Let's take a note from Corcus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he sees, though, <laughs> they both see and he overhear this like very important thing that Griffith says. And it's about friendship and what a friend means to him. And to him, a friend is an equal. And then and- we have that beautiful... Uh, yeah. panel or you know page of Griffith being like the light at the end of the darkness and Guts is at the other yeah, side yeah, and he's yeah. just looking at him and he's like wow I guess I am his friend and yeah. it kind of hit him and then like Casca kind of took that like I don't know if I'm your equal because <laughs> you uh, yeah, don't treat me as so differently <laughs> yeah and, you know back to the art I mean you're able to just see that in the face you're able to just see that by the look on their face and they both interpret it differently and you know 
Griffith also says something though a little interesting. He says, I, I feel like someone I consider a friend and an equal is someone who lives their own life for themselves and their dreams. Yet Guts has just finished doing something for Griffith. Yeah, Griffith, exactly. Guts has never done anything for himself. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So in reading that, even though I did feel like Guts took it as maybe I am his friend, I also wondered if Guts questioned it at the same time because of what he had literally just come back from doing. I mean, he d- that's all he knows. I mean, uh, he's that's all he knows is doing things for someone else to get love from that person. And he just did what he was asked. And he's like, wow, I am pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess you're right, though. I think he does see himself. I think he is really endeared and really, you know, he's really not I mean, not romantically in love, but he is like he really loves Griffith. And I think Griffith has to love him and they do have to have this bond. And I think. In that moment, Guts really does sort of realize that. Um, but, of course, everybody finds out what happened. And, you know, the the, the castle erupts into chaos. And um, after that, we're winding down. We're almost at the very end where uh, basically they're sent on another. The Hawks are sent on another mission, crusade, um, against the Blue Whales. And um, after we've just seen how Casca has sort of taken that News. speech and news yeah. from Griffith like we see her show up to this battle and she's not in her best form she's a little nah. she's a little sloppy under the weather yeah um and i kind of knew right away just from like how it was drawn and how she was acting like i kind of knew like i think this is what's happening i had no idea i was like oh she's got the flu yeah i thought no. she was yeah i thought she was sick or something i was like oh i, I don't know what's going on with her i mean just I, there was either something that she did or something that happened where i was like uh, i i hope she started asking for chocolate <laughs> oh wow. wow cody 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 oh wow. <laughs> this fucking guy has no idea wow huh? who's the corcus now at the very end yeah. of the buzzer huh <laughs> and it's not how you start the race, buddy. It's how you finish it. Corcus move. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're almost at the end. So, um, yeah, basically, um, this blue whale, this huge knight, is is telling Casca what every horrible man in every you know medieval story, <laughs> fantasy story tells them is that women can't be on the battlefield. Yada yada yada. And All the bullshit. And I will say, though, Casca is one of the most badass women, people, anyone I've ever seen because and it, it's how her struggles are portrayed, like mm-hmm. and how she deals with the things that she's going through and how we're even shown that she has to go through those things. It's maybe assumed or forgotten, but we get to see her have to deal with it, you know, and so she's, you know, not fighting at her best. Guts has to swoop in, help mm-hmm. her out. And they both get knocked off a cliff. They're both assumed dead again. Or not assumed dead, but Missing, assumed, assumed MIA. are capable of surviving. Yeah. I guess. So quite the opposite. Uh, Corcus is like, yeah. they definitely didn't survive. It's like, yeah. shut the fuck up. It's like, again. Up. Well, I guess now Corcus is in charge. He has yeah. to be. He's the second, third in command. God. And then we, we do get a line from, you know, you find out later that, oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, t- classic Tokyo Revengers Megan is back again. <laughs> said it continue it's so wild dude it's so wild <laughs> anyway we've been doing this for what over this? a year and volume, you spoil things it's in volume seven sorry i'm not oh gonna bring my it up god that's so ahead it's not so anyway ahead. they fall down this uh <laughs> cliff guts has to keep casca safe and guts gives Casca with taste of her own medicine. Okay. <laughs> kinda. Um, well, yeah, she's definitely passed out, high fever, or the whole nine, and he's like, fuck, I don't know what to do. Okay, she did this for me. I guess I could do this for her, not in like yeah. a weird way. No, not in a weird way. And he's, again, he's like showing like his childlike innocence where he only, I mean, he's not really thinking about that, but of course he's like, okay, this is a little weird, <laughs> but okay, whatever. Yeah. And then he's like, oh shit. And he's like, you know, like touching her, and he sees like blood. He's like, oh my God, what? And he does like a weird face. Yeah. He goes, Oh, being a woman's hard. Yeah, being a woman. <laughs> and sucks. I was like, yeah, where, no where, shit. Where was she stabbed? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Yikes. And that was honestly, that was like a super awesome touch because they could have just easily been like, oh, she has a flu, and it's like she's a fucking woman, dog. She was doing this shit as a fucking woman, which is fucking badass, dude. Which you, 
It's, no one fucking know. You obviously don't know. I mean, obviously I don't know, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know. But also, it's badass. It's badass. Yeah, and I love and that. It there's women out on the battlefield all day doing that shit. It's, and you're and you know, go off queen. Go off. That's why I like werewolves. Oh my god, dude. What do you mean? Their powers are based on the moon, just like you know, <laughs> women lay eggs according to uh, the ovulation. Moon. Hmm. All right, Cody. We're almost at the end. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's fucking badass. I love the, the super nice touch. And then she wakes up and she's like obviously naked. So she's like, what the fuck? She gets so pissed. She's just throwing stuff it's at God's. Cut. It's sort of played for comedy a little bit. And even before she wakes up, like that awesome moment where there's in the cave and he's just like protecting her with his sword and he's hugging her in the sword and he's like, we're going to make it out of this. It's okay. We're fine. I'm just, she's going to wake up. It's going to be fine. And he's yeah. just like protecting her. I it's, wish yeah. that was me. It's, it's, it's really touching. It's another really touching moment. That's what this story does. Badass moments, dark moments, touching moments, like always. Always. Um, and, uh, and then we get let in on Casca's backstory and how Griffith found her. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of parallels to guts, a lot of similarities. She was part of, she, you know, lived in a village that was very poor on the outskirts uh, or on like the edge of a mountain. Poor and they had like their, their crops in, yeah. were not flourishing and they hadn't, didn't have enough money and, you know, back, constantly. Constantly got, back in the day, in skirmishes you had a lot of kids so they can help you do shit on the farm. And then if there's nothing to do on the farm, then you're, they're just being fed and having to, you're having to pay for them. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, she, was sold uh, away mm -hmm. to a nobleman and uh it's crazy because you know she didn't even blame her parents for it really it made sense for them to do that because she oh. was a mouth to feed she was the youngest she couldn't really do much they're giving me a better life she knew i mean or yeah. at least I she mean, says in hindsight in, in that culture you know that's probably people don't think about that but that is probably something that was very common oh yeah of just i mean yeah yeah just I'm. I'll just buy your smallest child. Yeah, if you think people abuse their power now, <laughs> when there's like cameras and ways of tracking them. Yeah, no, no. It uh, was as easy as being like, when it you, was like you have the a lot. West. Yeah, yeah, no, it's as horrible. And you know, obviously, they're like the parents do what they fucking did, and it, I, it's the, it's horrible that they. Well, did yeah, that. and you have to assume that like the the parents, I'm sure, like feigned ignorance. They were like, no. He said he was going to take care of her. No, they just oh, did. They did it. No, <laughs> yeah. they, they said that dresses. to themselves to maybe make themselves feel probably, better. Yeah, that's but they knew what exactly is, yeah. what they were doing. But anyway, of course, this nobleman ends up forcing himself on her. Not even to at the, the way, castle you know, yet. Oh, on no, the can't even way to the there. yeah, in the wagon. Not even not even waiting a second. And she's like helpless and she doesn't know what to do. And then. The carriage gets stopped and they fall out and then he, here's to the rescue. And you Griffith. think it's going to happen again. Yeah. And it's almost it's almost sort of the body language is almost the same way that it was depicted when it happened to to guts. So, yeah. Uh, and, and but this time Griffith steps in to save Casca, but he doesn't save her in the most noble way that, that was, possible. That was the, the thing where it's like, oh, oh, he saved her, but he didn't do anything besides throw her a weapon and be which the guy could have grabbed yeah easily. yeah that's the, that's the thing right easily. and she barely got out of it alive so was griffith like that like what was that it was because he like he's doing all you know the dirty work he didn't want to kill the actual guy the the duke mm. so he's like if someone else does it then i could say that i've never killed actually uh, because you know yeah person. i guess in in battles he's killing other warriors and if he c killed this high-ranking nobleman, then that maybe would have been something that would have gotten back. Even at that point, he's trying to... Of course. He has he's that a, he's power. Got long yeah, he's term. got the long haul, yeah. long haul thinking. And also, yeah. he must have been like 12 at the time. Yeah, I don't know. The, <laughs> yeah, I, don't I don't know, know their, know. Age, their age. I don't know. I, I would, I, I'm curious to look it up. I, I need to know. It would probably give more context. But Because he does look very... He looks a lot older than Casca here, but then later they look the same age. Yeah. Um, He's just a young-looking guy. He stays young. He's good on the skincare, I guess. Must be. Um, but yeah, and, and so obviously Casca is endeared to him. She's she owes him in her mind her life. And she in a lot of ways feels like she was able to, she found herself because he found her. And 
wants to pick up the sword, wants to learn how to fight, wants to do whatever she can. Let me join you. Yeah. And Griffith's like, do whatever you want. <laughs> Just like the coolest boss ever. Yeah, you know, you know very laissez-faire type of... Uh, yeah, uh, mercenary you know, running, leader. Yeah, yeah, mercenary yeah. leader. I think I, it's the hair. I don't know. It's like a hippie. You know? I want to join your gang. Do whatever you want, dude. Can do I join you your want. gang if you want? Okay, <laughs> cool. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> yes. Then hey, wh- hey, whatever goes goes. <laughs> yeah. well, hey, me me by you? <laughs> if what doth your heart dream? <laughs> Maybe by the water cooler later, and we'll have a little splash yeah. fight. Yeah. Yes. Oh, have you ever had a splash fight at the bath area? It's it's quite refreshing. <laughs> it's quite delightful. Yeah, it might be a little different between me and you, but uh, <laughs> but I will win. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the thing too. I mean, I do like that. It was never. I mean, I don't really see it as a romantic thing. No, and it's no, not a romantic never. thing. It's it's very much like this is her big brother, like her family member that she wants to impress and wants to gain love, just like Guts did with Gambino. Very different relationship, obviously. Yeah. But it is that type of same thing where she's always trying to prove herself because she is a woman, which is Guts never really had to deal with. Yeah. So, you know, it is two different, uh, you know, it's a double edged sword, I guess. With yeah. her, especially, she's trying to achieve not only being a great warrior, but on top of that, she is a woman. So it's yeah. even harder for her yeah. to 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 get advantage of that. But I do like that it was never really like their relationship no. was like, oh, I like him. So I don't even think that he really sees her like that at all. Oh, not at all. That's I why think, I yeah. think she kind of is jealous of not like, you know, romantically, but, you know, as she sees him with the princess, he sees her. At, at, so it's a girl. It's a princess. She's a she's a, a, you know, she's 16, but she's, you know, a, she's seen as a girl. She dressed like a girl. And Casca is not that at all. She didn't even want to be. But she doesn't born. want to be. Yeah. And that's, or and she that's does, something. but she didn't she want does. to be born. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, she says that, that she, you know, and I think that's where her, you know, she's having to deal with her biology and she doesn't want to be a woman. She says, she's like, I, no one, I, ne- I, I never asked to be a woman. Like, and that's why she takes these things so personally on the battlefield. When people say she doesn't belong there, she belongs here. She's like, I never asked to be this. Like, I, why can't, why isn't being me enough like to be whatever I want to be and do whatever I want to do? And that's why she's saying And that's guts. why I think when Griffith said, do whatever you want, that's why it was so powerful. Mm. Because everybody her whole life has been told her that this is what a woman does. And now someone's saying, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do what a woman does. But, but then of course later goes and says that a woman's place is next to a dude. Exactly. You know? yeah, but so kinda, the one thing that you have to do. Entire... Well, I mean, maybe that's just part of his fucking mind games that he's playing, dude. I don't know. He's a master manipulator. Yeah, he is. He really is. He's he's scary. I wrote. I drew his face when he when he sees the when he's talking yeah. to the the duke or whatever. He just smiles at him. He's like taken back because he's like so powerful in those like those the 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 the, the eyes. His yeah. eyes are so scary, and he just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. But that's where we end. That's where volume six ends, and I think that was a beautiful spot to end. Um, uh, the this run of volumes on. It's just. It's just going to come back at such a important, I think, part. Right. Because now we have now we know why, you know, Casca and her relationship is the way it is with Griffith. We've seen Guts have to go through this thing. This is killing this child. And We've also seen all we, these things, these he, wheels are starting to turn. Yeah. And him actually relating to someone about what he went through is so important. Yeah. He's never talked about that. I mean, he didn't talk about it with her, but like just hearing, oh, Oh, wow. There's other people that are dealing with what I'm, uh, well, not wholly, you know, the whole thing, but like, oh, that is a common thing that I could talk to someone about. Yeah. Because I don't, I've never, it's in my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Nightmares. <laughs> and, you know, plans are in motion. And I think those plans are going to start to become executed and things are going to start to get Maybe a lot more complicated. Maybe infected in the cave. Uh, oh, what an uh, underwhelming way to lose an arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's either like, oh, the great beast mm. did strike. Doth was, strike. Sometimes what they do is just like, and then his arm fell off. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. It would be kind of like, I don't know how it would feel about it if there was some just like if you're constantly wondering how it happened and then he just like fell and then yeah like, yeah that got infected that'd be pretty left field uh, oh yeah okay is that a left arm thing yeah uh, <laughs> uh, but that's gonna do it and that is also gonna do it for the end of this episode um, obviously we want to do more of these and we plan on doing more of these in um, 
segmented into arcs. So this is part one of our Golden Age arc volume done. There'll probably be a part two and a part three, and then we'll move on to other arcs after that. But thank you for watching and, and listening. Um, it was a lot of fun to sit down and talk to you. After, obviously, the news and everything, it was nice to just celebrate, you know, this man's work and to to just look back on it fondly. And hopefully, if it's something that you've never read, well, hopefully you've read it if you watch this, but if it's something that you've that you've read and you've got to sit down and, and be with us while we talk about it, then hopefully, you know, it reminded you of all um, of all the great things that the story has to offer and will continue to have to offer and how it will continue to influence people. Um, because one thing that came of this was seeing how many people were affected by this man's work mm -hmm. and people who I never expected mm -hmm. to have, you know, to have this connection connection and to have held this so close to their heart and ha for it to have played such a crucial role in their life. Yeah, it was interesting because I had a coworker who was constant like, you got to check out Berserk. It's like, it's just crazy. And so I was always like, yeah, I'll get, I'll get around to it. Yeah. And then by the time I do, I'm like, oh, I guess I should have uh, appreciated. Yeah. Sometimes you should appreciate things while they're there. Yeah. And also like, I, I mean, you know, seeing it all online and, and, you know, people like to gate keep things a lot when it comes to I mean, anything, but anime and manga specifically, because they think that they're just, I don't know. I read Berserk back. It's like, okay, chill out. Anyone can pick up this wonderful piece of art and work and have an experience with it. So, yeah. like, don't be discouraged from wanting to start it, because we kind of were, because it's so, it's so vast and yeah. it has such a huge following and, and, and presence. And, like, don't, 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 if you want to read it, read it yeah, and it's just not just it. for the hype like not the hype i want to say but just you know i mean it, it, you pick it up and and don't feel bad for being told that oh well you're just reading it because of what happened and blah blah it's like no you want to appreciate yeah. it appreciate it yeah there's no time you know there's no time limit on it and sometimes you find things when they're when you're ready to find them. yeah you know what? there is no time what Cody? like the present mm, like the oh. face egg there's no time like the face egg like uh -huh. the face egg um, okay. Um, all I do want to say... You, you were saying that to Megan, to be clear. <laughs> oh, fuck. I thought I was saying it to Cody. I'm sorry, Megan. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. Um, the only one thing I do want to say, too, before we close the episode is, look, regardless of where the story goes, I'm excited to continue to share it with you guys. Definitely. Um, I'm excited to continue sharing it with everybody watching and listening. And each as week. for the future... Each week. And as for the future <laughs> of Berserk, I, whatever happens, I just hope that it honors... Miura and that it it's something that he would just be okay with I mean there's a lot of talk of like assistants picking it up and the studio picking it up and things happening and I just think that like you know we have what we have and as long as whatever comes after if anything comes after honors him and it's something that he would have wanted and I think that's it's just as simple as that exactly uh, and and hopefully you know at least we have and not even at least we have this you know beautiful story mm -hmm. and uh it's just it's just been awesome to to share it with you guys and we can't uh wait to continue sharing it with you so um we usually do wonder circle all these things but i think we're just going to end the episode on our outro it's always the same and never changes and i think we know what that is today which is i think we should i think we should pay some respects oh yes and um i think we should say rest in peace yes yes i think so Kentaro Miura. Kentaro Miura. All right. Rest in peace, um, Kentaro Miura. Yes. So, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Rest, Rest in, in peace, peace Kentaro, Kentaro Miura. Miura. The goat. The goat. The legend. The legend, the goat. Yes. Yes.